and for every person on the planet. We made our premium hotspot shield app for the iPhone free for users in Venezuela to be able to get to Twitter and other internet services without censorship. We continue to be committed to providing secure access to the world's information for 7 billion people. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, secessionist sentiment seems to be hugely on the rise in Italy, and at this rate, the nation may soon be sloughing off autonomous regions like skin flakes, with Venice virtually out of the door. A week-long referendum in the area around Venice proposed the idea of reforming the Repubblica Veneta, which existed independently for centuries until its conquest by Napoleon and military annexation by Austria. Strong turnout was reported and 89% of the votes were in favor of secession. The vote was non-binding, but the overwhelming nature of the vote suggests self-rule may be inevitable in Venice and is going to be virtually impossible for Italy to ignore. Sardinia might not be far behind. The autonomous region, itself independent for centuries before the formation of Italy, isn't looking to go alone like Venice, however, and activists there are suggesting an accession into Switzerland, suggesting that as a way out of both Italy and the EU for the economically struggling region. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Wired.com reports the NSA has many secrets, but here's a new one. The agency is refusing to say how much water it's pumping into the brand new data center it operates in Bluffdale, Utah. According to the NSA, its water usage is a matter of national security. The agency made the argument in a letter sent to officials in Utah who were considering whether or not to release the data to the Salt Lake Tribune. In May of last year, Tribune reporter Nate Carlisle asked for local records related to the data center, but when he got his files a few months later, the water usage data was redacted. The situation shows just how important the new data center will be to the agency's operations, including its widely discussed efforts to eavesdrop on internet communications. The agency believes if it reveals how much water it is using in Bluffdale, outsiders could get an idea of the scope of the NSA surveillance. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Our planet is but a giant petri dish swirling with pathogens, all mixed by the filthy stirring straw that is the world's fauna. Simply by sitting on her eggs and breathing, this duck unleashes a torrent of avian botulism, cholera, and duck plague into the air. These jousting elk slough off bits of skin and fur, sending millions of harmful bacteria into the air. Our closest relative, the chimpanzee, is itself the fountainhead of AIDS. Bitter at the ascendancy of man, these scheming apes brood this deadly virus in their jungle lairs. Nowhere on Earth is safe from the threat of animals. Even in the bitter wasteland of the Antarctic, Penguins walk for miles inland, ensuring their afflictions reach every corner of the globe. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you would like. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in to username lrn.fm. Though keep in mind you will need uh, to send us a contact request first. So just do that. We'll get that part out of the way. You'll, You'll be accepted and then it'll be easy for you to contact us on Skype. 
from that point forward. Big secession news. Apparently, uh, Ali, you said we talked about this last week on yes. Monday uh, as something that could happen. And now it has happened from the Daily Mail. And then coming up, we'll give you what's going on with a young boy and a My Little Pony backpack. That's Ali, right. Ali has that story. He uh, He got in some trouble, but maybe things have... Have panned out for him. We'll give you the details. But first, from the Daily Mail, Venice has voted to split from Italy as 89% opted to form a new independent state. Wow. Venetians have voted overwhelmingly for their own sovereign state in a referendum on independence from Italy. I think that's more than they had expected to get. I think they were being conservative with what they expected the turnout to be, which was more than a majority. Wow. It's incredible. Uh, Inspired by Scotland's separatist ambitions, because they're going to be voting in September, I believe. Uh, 89% of the residents of the Lagoon City and its surrounding area opted to break away from Italy in an unofficial ballot. The proposed Repubblica Venetia would include the 5 million inhabitants of the Veneto region and could later expand to include parts of Lombardy, Trentino, and Frulli Venezia Gulia. I'm sure I'm butchering that. The floating city has only been part of Italy for 150 years. The thousand-year-old democratic Serenissima Repubblica di Venezia was quashed by Napoleon and was subsumed into Italy in 1866. Wealthy Venetians, under mounting financial pressure in the economic crisis, have rallied their thousands, uh, rallied in their thousands after growing tired of supporting Italy's poor and crime-ridden Mezzogorino South through high taxation. Activists have been working closely with the SNP on their joint agendas, even traveling to Scotland alongside Catalonians. Of course, the Catalonian area of Spain also is looking for independence, as well as Basque separatists to take part in pro-independence rallies. Campaigners say the Rome government receives around 71 billion euros each year in tax from Venice, some 21 billion euros less than it gets back in investment and services. So they're, like a lot of places, tired of paying in billions of dollars. Is this like or euros the this concept case. of a negative state or a positive state? Is that how people refer? People in the yeah. U.S. talk about how certain states tax cost positive, more money. Tax negative, yeah. So then some- they bring in and tax money. So yeah, so certain states in the United States uh, pay in to the federal government more than they receive in federal benefits. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, you and I don't see any of that. It's just the state gets certain monies back. So obviously money goes into the feds, they take a cut off the top for the bureaucrats, and then certain states receive more than they're paying in as far as federal programs. Right. None of these states handouts. actually win. It's just that some are losing harder. That's pretty much yeah. That's the case. Although some do uh, get more than they put in. So that would be the tax positive uh, okay. states. And so the people in Venice are sick of being tax contributors to the rest of Italy. Campaigners say that, uh, organizers say that 2.36 million, 73% of those eligible to take part, voted in the poll. So I don't know if that's quite a super majority, but it's a serious majority yeah. of people They're in the area. They're fired up about this issue. The ballot also appointed a committee of 10 who immediately declared independence from Italy. Venice may now start withholding taxes from Rome. Very exciting stuff. I wish I had enough money to move to Venice. Do you? Seriously? I think it's like a million dollars a month for an apartment there. Uh Uh-uh. No way. Really? I think it's a lot of money. Would you really move to to Venice, Italy, if you could? I don't know. Because I went there one time. I went there for like a day. Actually, for three hours. Uh, this is when I was 18. Okay. It's like a school trip. It's so embarrassing. You were going all we over had to Europe? wear we had to wear like blue windbreakers with you know, we stood out as Americans. So that way all the Italian yeah, guys Yeah, so they knew would know American girls. They would know that we were lame and from America. Did any Italian guys try to pick you up while you were there? No. No. I actually had a really gross pizza. It had been sitting out <laughs> for a long time. I was like, well, I guess I'll eat pizza. It so was wait, all that was around. You were in Venice for a few yes, hours? Yes. So was it one of those Europe trips where you're going all different yep. places? Everywhere. We went, I mean, not everywhere, but we went to like Paris for a day. Mm-hmm. So you never really got to, you just got to see it. It's like you might as well just see pictures of it. Yeah, you didn't really get to stop and you know, experience the flavor or whatever. But our tour guide was almost like a real estate agent. She was telling us all about the architecture and then telling us about the apartments and people that live there and what it's like to live there, which is pretty cool. But Is that where you heard that it was a million dollars? Well, I don't know. It was something like that. I remember thinking like a million dollars. I hope one day I can 
do that. But I don't know if I would actually enjoy going around on boats and what do they call the boats they go around on? Uh, gondolas? Gondolas. I think that is right. I don't know if I would enjoy paying a million dollars a month for rent for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I might be I might be overestimating the cost. So uh, back to the story here. So again, 73, I think it was, 70, yeah, 73% uh, voted in this referendum. And a uh, major, major change here coming to, uh, to Italy. Campaigner Paolo Bernardini, professor of European history at the University of Insubria in Como, northern Italy, said it was high time for Venice to become an autonomous state once again. Although history never repeats itself, we are now experiencing a strong return of little nations. I don't know what he means by history never repeats itself. Small and prosperous countries able to interact among each other in the global world. The Venetian people realize that we are a nation worthy of self-rule and openly oppressed. And the entire world is moving towards fragmentation, a positive fragmentation, where local traditions mingle with global exchanges. President of the Venetia region, Luca Zaya, of the Separatist Northern League Party, said that Venetians had lost 85,000 jobs in the crisis and were now hungry for change. The will for secession, he says, is growing even stronger. Do you think that's true, that like r- worldwide fragmentation has been sort of the trend? Well, yeah, if you look at... Uh, I just looked at fragmentations. The process of being... Uh, process or state of breaking or being broken into smaller separate parts. So it yeah, makes it's, sense. It's decentralization. And yes, if you look at the number of so-called nations in the world over the last, I think, 100 or 200 years, there are more now. There are something like twice as many uh, now as there were. I wish I knew more. Like, I, Is it that big states are breaking apart or is it that Sure. Well, I mean, certainly you had the Soviet Union, which broke up uh, in the, the late 1980s. That's mm-hmm. one of the ones that happened during our lifetime. Uh, I can't say I'm an expert on this particular subject, although I love the idea. It's just that, you know, little there's a lot of secessions you don't hear about. Wasn't it Sudan that also broke up uh, somewhat recently? Yeah, I think that they're like, uh, I really shouldn't speak about things I don't know about, right. but I feel like there was warring in Sudan over something like that. So a lot of times these things happen without much fanfare. And you don't hear about it. But uh, so, yes, the answer is there. there is more decentralization today than there ever was in the past. And while people haven't gotten over the idea of nation states yet, as I think we might like to see people do here on Free Talk Live to end the idea of the state itself, certainly having more states in the world and smaller states is preferable than and having, having one overarching state. Right. One or just a few mega, you know, these sort of megalithic, uh, ginormous states out there. So really the United States is kind of a relic at this point. If you look at the, the rest of the world as far as sizes of countries, Russia's pretty big. Russia and China, they're they're definitely big places. Uh, but, you know, on the scale of things, the United States is is one of the, the few relics left that they're, they've got this old system of uh, joint. Of course, now the EU is sort of mimicking the United States to some extent. And from what we uh, talked to somebody recently on the show, they explained that there's some ups and some downs to the EU, like being able to travel easily from state to state, but also lots of regulations and taxes. Right. And I think that when you look at these bigger countries like the United States, Russia, China, and they have these really powerful governments that seem to play like a big role in world politics, that it seems like, oh, well, they must be doing something right by having this big government. But I think it's just that maybe the currency all being the same among that many people is just like a powerful force and it feeds into this huge government. But what if, like, everyone on Earth was using the same currency that wasn't owned by a government? Ooh, like Bitcoin? 855-450 frees the toll-free number. You can share your thoughts. Come on up here in moments. Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with Bitcoins? Isn't there, like, a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical Bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. 
they get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, what happened to a uh, young man, little boy maybe? I'm not sure how old he is. Do you Little recall? boy. Little boy. Little boy wearing a My Little Pony backpack to school. Stirred some controversy. We'll share that with you. Plus, an insanely inefficient uh, government program. We'll get the details on what's being called the sinkhole of bureaucracy and a lot of this content is coming right from the front page of our website freetalklive.com you can create the content there and you can also vote so maybe you don't have anything you want to submit you can just go there and you can vote up the stuff that you like and vote down what you don't so go to freetalklive.com you can get creative there and if you have a reddit account you do need to have a reddit account that's free and the free talk live account is also free you just link the two together in a very short simple process you can easily submit content and vote it up or down at your leisure at freetalklive.com. So we got a correction uh, during the break, actually, because Mark is sick today. And so he's staying at home listening to the show, and he's uh, he's tweeting and, you know, and Facebooking and things like that. 
And also, what a hard worker. He's also fact-checking us, which is nice, because normally we don't have the luxury of a producer. We have to rely on you, the listener, to correct us when we're wrong, and we're frequently wrong here on Free Talk Live because we're humans, and we're also usually busy doing other things during the day, so this is probably well, one of the... if he was here, he would be fact-checking us, too, but we just get to expound further upon our point that's not correct. True, he's not here. Uh, but he's also able to, you know, when you're not actually on the air, you have more time to focus on doing research and That's things true. like that. So he has pulled up the number of countries, because we were talking about this in the last segment. Um, I had said that it was, seemed like there were at least twice as many countries within the last 200 years. Turns out there are f- about four times as many countries today as there were over just over 100 years ago. Then why is it that people, when you talk about secession, it must just, it must just be... Because in the United States, the Civil War was it's just like the Union won, so everyone takes their side. And so here, when you hear secession, people just immediately think like slavery, racism, it's wrong. Or they'll just say, that was decided in the 1800s. <laughs> and then there's like no more conversation. Right. It's over. There was a war about it, so it can't ever happen. Uh, but th- th- according to the statistics here, and these are from DLC.org, the number of countries per, now this is from the government's list, uh, in two, the year 2000 was 192. Now compare that to 100 years prior where it were, there were only 57. Wow. So that's a pretty big change in what amounts to just a few generations' time. We in school didn't even attempt to know what all the countries were. We barely could get the states down. Oh, no kidding. I mean, geography, talk about a difficult class. It's, yeah, I mean, who could memorize 192 Boring. countries? Somebody probably could, but not me. So the term uh, globalization here from this tr- uh, Trade Fact of the Week document, the term globalization has no clear definition but seems to combine trade integration with global financial markets, improved communications technology, and worldwide vogues for art, stress, and entertainment. The modern world has seen two rounds of it, roughly coinciding with the second halves of the 19th and 20th centuries. The Victorian area development of communications and travel through steam, global news agencies, and transoceanic telegraph cables has a counterpart in today's airline networks, media conglomerates, and internet connections. The proportion of world GDP to trade and investment after eight post-war rounds of trade talks is about the same now as it was in 1913. The big contrast is political. 19th century globalization also meant the amalgamation of lots of small countries into a few big ones. The 21st century version has been accompanied by the creation of many little countries. Between 1860 and 1895, about 80 countries were wiped off the map uh, through, number one, the Riso, oh boy, Risorgimento in Italy, which abolished four dukedoms and one small kingdom. Two, German unification, which were 37 small to medium-sized kingdoms and principalities combined into uh, one. And three, colonial ventures with colorful names like The Great Game and Scramble for Africa, which extinguished or converted into protectorates, three Central Asian Khanates, about 25 African states, four Pacific Island kingdoms, six Southeast Asian monarchies, and numerous smaller tribal associations. By the mid-1890s, Europe's total count of independent countries had dropped to 24, Asia's to 5, and Africa's to 2. So apparently in the past, there were more uh, nations than there were in the year 1900. Uh, Let's see. So by Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee Ceremony in 1897, held just after the curtain went down on the monarchies of Hawaii, Tonga, Madagascar, Aceh, and Sulu, there were about 56 independent countries Worldwide, which is probably an all time low. The 20th century trend toward more countries began with Cuban independence in 1898. Australia, Panama, Norway, and Albania followed in the next decade. Since then, about 130 more countries have emerged with the breakup of Tsarist Russia, Austria Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire after World War I, the decolonization of Asia, Africa, the Middle East, the Caribbean, and the Pacific between 1945 and 1980, and the collapse of the Soviet Union. And Yugoslavia, which brings us to close to today, because this article was actually written in 2003. So we've had another decade since then. I'm sure that uh, it wouldn't take too much more effort to find out how many more countries have been added to the world. Because I've heard it's over 200 today, like 207 or something like that. So if you know and you want to uh, let us know, 855-450-FREE. And maybe we'll see another one soon here in New Hampshire as somebody breaks away, some state from the United States 
it seems inevitable with the way the the rest of the world has been going. This yeah, but trend. I think if one if one does it, then the rest are just going to follow. That's uh, that's, that's what, what I'm wor- hoping that's for. What the, I, that's what I hope for too. But I think that's what they're worried about. Like if one, they better state, be worried. If they're like, we're just we're just Vermont over here. We're just New Hampshire over here. We're little. Let us go. It's mm-hmm. no big deal. And then I think that they would know that if they do that, then there go. There goes all of New England. So do you think that uh, there would be, they'd roll in tanks and there'd be scary stuff happening? I have no idea what to think. So if you want to share your thoughts, 855-450-FREE. If you think secession's a good idea and you love the ideas of liberty, you should move to New Hampshire. And even if you don't really aren't a fa- fan of secession or you're unsure, as long as you love the ideas of liberty, you probably should move to New Hampshire. Because the Free State Project isn't an explicitly secessionist movement. You don't have to sign some sort of agreement saying you're a secessionist or you believe in secession. But there sure are a lot of free staters, as we might be uh, called, that are in support of secession. You, Ali, sound like one of them. Yes, I am. I am also. You can go to freestateproject.org, learn about a movement of 20,000 liberty-minded people all coming to the same place. We don't have that 20,000 yet. We're actually trying to get to that number. We've got over 15,500 now. So we're getting there. Sometime within the next two years, we are likely going to hit that 20,000 number. And then there'll be a five-year window wherein all 20,000 will have to move to New Hampshire. And we already have over 1,500 people who are here now. Yeah, signers. Over 1,500 signers of the Free State Project are here now. That's over 1,000 people who've moved because there were a couple hundred that were already here when New Hampshire was chosen. Uh, But that's that's a significant movement. There have been significant wins thus far for the ideas of freedom, and it'll only get better as we get thousands more people here. And the idea of secession is one that's already being tossed around. Uh, There's the secessionist New Hampshire Liberty Party that's been formed here. There is the pro-secession think tank group, the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence. So we're just getting the ball rolling on this. We really need more liberty-minded people here. So go to freestateproject.org and maybe... We'll see New Hampshire be the first independent nation to break away from the United States. That would be awesome. It's going to happen somewhere, whether it's Vermont, Hawaii, Texas. I don't know where it's going to be. Alaska. These are all possibilities. I would be proud if New Hampshire was first. It would be awesome. But even if we were second, I'd be okay with that, too. It's Free Talk Live. More coming. Attention radio listeners, are you getting amazing results from your store-bought Omega-3? Since taking Omax-3, mental fuzziness is gone. I'm on top of things. My bad cholesterol had gone down, and my triglycerides had gone down. Being 53, sometimes it's pretty uncomfortable getting up and getting out of bed. With the Omax-3, I'm jumping out of bed, and the joints feel great. We want your Omax story next, so we're sending you a free supply. Developed by Ivy League doctors affiliated with Yale University, Omax-3 is clinically tested to help improve cholesterol and reduce triglycerides by 30% in just 30 days while fighting joint pain better than your store brand. You can also feel improvements in your mood and memory with your first free supply. Omax 3's pharmaceutical grade omega 3s come individually blister packed so it absorbs better and gives you faster results with no fish burps. Feel results in just days, guaranteed. Get your free supply today for just the cost of shipping. Call 1 800 672 4601. That's 1 800 672 4601. 800 672 4601. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want right here, toll free, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you on the site. Features including our YouTube channel. This is kind of new. Wow. For the last few weeks. Well, we've had the channel for a couple of years, but. Really hadn't done that much with it besides put up the occasional pitch video talking about the AMP program, stuff like that. But now we're actually putting up a new video every single night, and it is the full three-hour recorded version of Free Talk Live. Which anyone so, could just cut up into whatever pieces they wanted to, right? They sure could. That's yes. cool. And, and uh, illustrate them. If you wanted to, you certainly could. How much of that will be done, just saying, I guess, I remains think, to be seen. I just want to put it out there that someone could do that. <laughs> certainly. Yeah, we don't believe in the intellectual property stuff. So feel free, download, chop it up, upload it somewhere else. I don't care. Do what you want with it. But the, the episodes are there. We're doing them on a nightly basis. Keep in mind, it's video, so it takes longer to process that stuff than like an audio file. So if you're itching for the video after the show's over, you're probably going to have to wait a few hours. I don't know how long it usually takes YouTube because usually we just kind of hit the publish button and then leave. So sometime during the overnight, usually the video does go up. Uh, certainly, likely by the next morning, you'll get the previous night's show. YouTube.freetalklive.com takes you right to the YouTube channel. You can subscribe there. And of course, we still have audio archives, as we always have, at freetalklive.com. But I thought that was unique enough to, wor uh, to you know, warrant its own mention here. Our toll-free number is 855-453. Also, something that warrants mentioning is blockchain.info. If you've got an Android phone and you don't yet have the blockchain app and you're into Bitcoins, well, what are you waiting for? Go to blockchain.info and get the most useful, in my opinion, the best Android-based uh, Bitcoin app. Now, I've I wish, got it. Uh, yeah, so do I. And I wish there were uh, something that we could say was the best for Apple's iPhone and iPad devices, but unfortunately, Apple seems to hate Bitcoin and has banned all Bitcoin apps from their App Store. However, if you're an Apple user, you can still visit blockchain.info. They have a web wallet that you can use there. And blockchain's wallet features allow you to easily send Bitcoins anywhere in the world. And Bitcoin is, we're talking about decentralization of nations. Bitcoin's a decentralized currency. So all of these things are kind of happening at once. And now you've got the decentralized currency that is no one is in charge of, everybody controls, and it's wonderful. So if you haven't looked into Bitcoin yet, go to weusecoins.com. And if you're ready to get a Bitcoin wallet, you can get one for free, more than one if you want, over at blockchain.info. All right, so our number tonight again, 855-450 free. We're talking about secession, decentralization, of the world and watching you know all these countries become more than what they were and have more splitting off which is why the uh, Crimea vote was so disappointing that 
they didn't want to split out into their own country. They instead wanted to, you know, join Russia, apparently, which right. seems like the wrong way to go. I wouldn't want to, we discussed this briefly last week, but I wouldn't want to join Canada. Uh, it would just be bringing <laughs> on a whole new realm, uh, realm of problems. But uh, But doing our own thing. Yeah, there are going to be challenges involved there if New Hampshire or Vermont or any other U.S. state secedes. It's not going to necessarily be an easy road, but I think it would be worth whatever the effort would be. What do you think the dif- where do you think the difficulty would come in? Well, you never know, right? I mean, the worst case scenario is Washington rolls in tanks or drops a nuke or something ridiculous like that, right? Yeah, like- but let's just say that they like pretend like they let it go peacefully. Okay, so the next worst thing is that uh, there's severe restrictions and uh, trade restrictions put on the new independent. Yeah, they're going to be all isolationist. Like, we're going to grow our own food and we're going to do everything on our own. We're not going to be trading with any of the other states or countries. Well, I I would hope that uh, Free New Hampshire would not take a position like that. Uh, What I meant was the United States uh, may put severe restrictions, if not sanctions, on the new New Hampshire, just in the same way that they put sanctions on other See, countries that be and people peaceful. have starved to death. I'm no, saying, it certainly yeah. wouldn't be. But, but okay, so sanctions are definitely not peaceful, but what about uh, tariffs? I mean, those aren't perceived of as violence necessarily, but they're also, while you could argue that they're not peaceful, they're certainly not the same as, as sanctions, right? I would say it's still, I mean, yeah, because it's trade among two people like if someone puts a tariff on something you want to give to me then that's introducing like that's putting violence on you i guess because I you can't sell it to me for the price you want to sell it but to the me world for. probably won't see it as unusual no for no i think it, that would be more acceptable in their eyes and of course they could start building border patrol checkpoints all around the outside border of new hampshire and make it very difficult to go into vermont and maine is that usually what happens when when uh, you know a certain state breaks off or they know. divide, that's... if I wonder if they if that's common for the others to at- retaliate, like feel have an ego good about question. it, like you we weren't good enough for you. Right. It'll be Breaking interesting up. to see uh, what happens in the Venice situation there in Italy because they just voted for, for. If you're just tuning in, they voted overwhelmingly to declare independence and form their own country. So I'm I'm just kind of trying to come up with some of the bad things that that could come out of this. Right now, if the if the rest, let's say the United States puts severe restrictions on, at least from Massachusetts, Vermont, and Maine's perspective, we still would have the international border with Canada. We could do some trading over that, and we would still have a very, very small international ocean border uh, on the, you know, the southeast, the seacoast of New Hampshire. So without them putting uh, ships in the water and barricading boats and trade, you know, trade routes, then we would be able to trade with the entire world. I think politically it would make more sense for multiple states to secede. Sure. You know, for us to but get together. Coordinating that could be very, very difficult. Right. I mean, it's even it's it's difficult enough just to put forth the idea of secession, let alone to have different secessionist groups. Like, for instance, the people that are pushing for secession in Vermont, they do have a different viewpoint on a lot of things than, say, a lot of the people pushing for secession in New Hampshire. If we were to see Vermont and New Hampshire secede, it would be a very interesting study in contrast because Vermont tends to lean kind of uh, a little socialist, I guess you could say. Yeah, they're yin, we're yang. So you might see like uh, instead of free market health care, which we might want to see here in New Hampshire, you might see a socialist single payer system in Vermont. That would be super interesting. And it would be an interesting kind of- If it was allowed, like some kind of experiment. And they do kind of look like yin and yang as far as- It's true. I mean, not exactly, (laughs) but the way they fit together- Eh, See, geography's bit. not boring. <laughs> so you can share uh, your thoughts on secession if you want. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. But I'm excited. I mean, the the, th- the chance that later this year Scotland could su- uh, secede from the UK, that's, that's something that's been a long time coming. And uh, according to the early polls, it's not exactly going to cut it at this point. They still have a good six months left before the vote and maybe... The other things happening in the world, like Venice seceding from Italy, maybe that'll encourage uh, the Scottish people to to take heed and and move forward with this idea. I sure hope so. I wonder if when a certain area wants to secede from the bigger government, if if it changes their behavior beyond, you know, like if the opportunity is there, because I feel like that was sort of what the people who worship the constitution and say, you know, that this is the, this should be the Supreme law or that this was a good document and Mm -hmm. it was violated that 
it was supposed to make it so that, you know, a lot of people are minarchists who believe in the Constitution, and they believe in a small government, and they're not necessarily against the federal government, but that they just think it should stick to certain things, and that they think that, you know, and so if you're going to believe in that, if you're going to be for the Constitution, then you should definitely be a strong secessionist, because I think that that was sort of the spirit of it, was that these strict well, yeah. limits I mean, they were mean declaring that, independence from Great Britain, right? But for the Constitution, it's yeah. like, you know, if if you go beyond these boundaries, we're not part of the Union anymore. Like, this is the contract. It's supposed to be a contract between all the states in, and the United States that if at any point they pass this line, then the option to secede is there because they haven't met contract. It should be that contract. way, but I don't think that's in the Constitution, is it? I mean, otherwise, it'd be pretty easy to get out of this whole scam. <laughs> Well, isn't it the idea that any violation of the Constitution means that you voided that contract, which... That's a good idea. I mean, I support that idea. I think that really what matters, Ali, is that people come to agree with you. If people agree with your perspective, and that is that, you know, well, the Constitution was violated, so it's null and void, so we're just going to say goodbye now, then we then it would happen. I mean, really, this is all about changing people's minds and changing the, the zeitgeist or the spirit of the times, if you will. If people start talking about secession if people really want secession in the united states it'll happen it's happening in the rest of the world why shouldn't it happen here it's free talk live i want to share something important that will not only improve your life but the lives of many others as well and all you need to do is drink coffee i'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee no this is truly the best of the best coffee we've partnered with Kamano island coffee roasters to offer buzz box with every purchase 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. When I signed up for the Free State Project, I was excited by the prospect of moving somewhere with other people that had liberty as a goal. When I got here to New Hampshire, I was stunned by the great weather and the natural beauty. The Free State Project is helping to move liberty forward. Want to be involved? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. That's freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want right here toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on in. Username lrn.fm. You don't have to be on the subject of secession, which is what we've been talking about for the bulk of the hour here on Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. I was trying to find a more updated uh, date, or not date, uh, an updated number of countries in the world, and... According to worldatlas.com, although I don't see for sure when the publishing date was on this article, it says, as of May 1st, 2008, the United Sta- United Nations has 192 official members. However, that doesn't include, I don't think, all of the nations in the world. The U.S. State Department recognizes 194 independent countries around the world. Uh, but that list of countries reflects the political agenda of the United States. As hmm. an example, it includes Kosovo, but it's not include Taiwan, as China claims that Taiwan is simply a province of China. Interesting. So I guess the other question is, well, who do you believe when it comes to the list of countries? How do you know who who compiles these lists? Usually, well, is governments. It, is Italy gonna gonna be like, no, that's Venice now. They're separate. I mean, I bet Italy's still gonna claim that Venice is part of them. That, again, remains to be seen. It should be interesting to see how it all plays out over time. I'm very interested to see because it sounded like it was just like a referendum that was non-binding. But on the other hand, part of the article over in uh, the Daily Mail said that they may start withholding taxes at this point. That the people in Venice consider it to be a binding resolution That where 73% of them voted. And then of the 73%, 89% voted to secede from Italy. I mean, it will be interesting to see what happens with that. Because if they stop paying their taxes, then, you know, it just, I'm sure that there could be, like, I don't know what they're going to do because I don't know they what their Italy? options are. Italy is going to do if Venice wasn't paying their taxes. It seems like it wouldn't be worth it to retaliate or to try to do something to force them in because they depend on them. Well, right. And also, uh, while they could bring in the troops, they could occupy the streets, that's an incredibly costly endeavor. And, and Right, you're under- destroying your money maker. And a lot of people go to Venice to tour. If you bomb Venice, that's going to like totally ruin its value. Yeah, and uh, and so while it's certainly true that most governments can print out money and go to war for quite a long time, there is an effect to that, and it certainly is a, is going to be a negative publicity kind of thing, especially when they're invading a place where likely a lot of the very people who are doing the invading have family members. So that's going to be something else that the United States government will have to deal with when the time comes, when, you know, whichever state it is, is the first to secede from the United States. Because a lot of the people that you talk to about secession, when you ask them how they feel about secession, oh, I like the idea, but they're just going to roll in troops, or they're going to drop a nuke, or they're going to, there's always, in a lot of cases, not always, but in a lot of cases, people will jump straight to the, oh, crap, the U.S. federal government will use violence on us. Because, ultimately that's what they do i mean everybody knows inherently that that's what the federal government does that's to what people. they would like to do at least 
They if might it, like if that, for some yeah. reason it wasn't in their power to do. It's then certainly within I guess their power. that would be that would be a good time. But it but it wouldn't be a very good move on their part because in the the times of the Civil War, news didn't travel very quickly. And there were certainly a lot of people who were unhappy with the idea of the the Civil War at that time. Right. Uh, to to have another the equivalent of another Civil War in today's world, where information travels in a lightning split second. I mean, I feel like it would be harder to justify Civil War in the U.S. these days. It would be very hard to justify that, especially when you would be seeing video footage of the troops rolling in of. The you know gunshots being fired. This stuff would be put up on YouTube. It would be put up on Live Leak. Uh, people would see the U.S. troops shooting and killing the very people that they were purportedly protecting, just you know days prior or whatever. So I don't personally believe that it's going to come to violence if it comes to secession, at least on the part of the United States. I think they'll have to begrudgingly respect it. Uh, of course, I could be totally wrong, and you know, there, if there's an argument to be made from somebody saying that, oh, you're totally pie in the sky, Ian, on this. Yeah, they would be very, very violent, and here's how they would do it. Or maybe they'd put in sanctions or block the ports. So we don't know what would happen, but I it would don't depend care. On the, it would depend on what's happening at the time, right? It's not like, you know, Well, maybe... they're certainly spread thin across the world, so what troops are they going to use to invade New Hampshire? Right. I mean— I I don't claim to know what what would the reaction be, but I know that, um, you know I've heard in interviews that uh, Obama or maybe like as a, when he addressed the country, um, that he basically referenced the Civil War when secession. You was mean when brought that up. question was asked about the yeah. Texas? Uh, what was it? The Texas they had like a petition after the election in twenty twelve. So they're not uncomfortable threatening it, but I don't know if paper I just, tiger. It's a paper tiger. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, no one's sure, and there's no way that we could be sure. And and they may threaten right up until the very brink and then back down, or they might drop a nuke. But ultimately, I don't care. For me, that's not the concern. The concern is the principle of we need to do this. This needs to happen. It's happening around the world. Secession is a popular idea. People see the value in it. When you talk to people in the United States, there was a poll. I think it's probably a couple of years old at this point, so maybe it's even better these days. But it's like one out of five agree with the idea of secession right now. It's not bad. And as far as a starting point is concerned, that's not bad at all to have 20% of people saying, yeah, let's let's see secession in the United States. So if one out of five thinks secession is a good idea, then that's not going to make a war against that seceding state particularly popular. And it's just going to look terrible. To some extent, government has to be concerned with PR. I mean, it looks bad to us as libertarians when they go warmongering around the world and destroying people's lives elsewhere. And, and we don't support that as, as peace-oriented people. We get that. But I also understand that they would probably like to have wars with a lot of countries that just wouldn't be as popular of wars because for whatever reason, we feel like we should protect those people. It, yeah, it looks bad. It's like, you know, the difference to the people in the United States, and it's, it's wrong that people think this way, but they do. They don't look at people in the rest of the world as the same as the United States. It's it's ethnocentrism. They're afraid uh, of them. It's terrible. They think they're they're not humans or something like that. And that's why they, they brush aside going to war with other countries. But they're not going to feel the same way, I don't think, when it comes to New Hampshire or Vermont declaring secession. There's no way they can deny that those are their friends and family members because they are. Unless for some reason they feel like, you know, this, this pride of being an American and that... Oh, you don't want to be an American anymore? What's wrong with you? They could turn, viciously yeah. turn on I us. I could see it having that kind of tone. Yeah. So you don't know what's going to happen, but I don't think fear of the unknown is a valid reason to not go forward with this. I agree. Although I would be, I am concerned about vi potential violence and I would support, I, I think that I wouldn't be like, no, well, we can't secede or try make any attempt to secede because they could be violent. I think it's like a good effort to get at least the idea out there and to one day hopefully put it up to a vote. If you think that it would look good for the cause, then yeah, vote on it. I think that would be really interesting. It would have to, actually, here in New Hampshire. Uh, you would have to see it put to a popular vote and it would have to get, I think, two-thirds, if I'm recalling correctly. So it's a pretty big 
hurdle to get over. I mean, and we're nowhere near it right now. But it would be interesting to do a poll of New Hampshireites. I would find that very interesting because we've seen the polls of the United States right. as far as how many people in the U.S. support secession. But what do the people in New Hampshire think? What do the people in Vermont think? It would be interesting to see a breakdown of state by state to see where the real support lies. Because if there's a bunch of people in New Hampshire who think secession is a fine idea and a bunch of people in California and New York who don't think it's a good idea, then California and New York could very well outweigh New Hampshire as far as their weight versus you know, right. the amount of population is a lot heavier there versus New Hampshire. So – you know, even though it's one out of five across the U.S., what's the actual numbers within the borders of New Hampshire? If I had, you know, a bunch of money to throw it up making a poll, you know, I'd hire Zogby or somebody like that to to look into that question. You know, I I am very used to people here in New Hampshire, and it's probably all over the United States, but I don't know if it's really concentrated here, but I definitely hear a lot of people complaining about the federal government here hmm. more than I've been used to. I think in the past, but I was also, I mean, I, I got here about three years ago, so I haven't been everywhere in the country to know like what the political climate's like, but it's just normal to hear people complaining about the federal government and everything they do. The toll-free number tonight. If you want to share your thoughts, you're welcome to join us here. 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the My Little Pony backpack that stirred controversy. Allie will be sharing us, uh, sharing with us the details. And again, you can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Hour number two is next. You take control here on Free Talk Live. The flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have over 8 million square feet of top quality flooring that must be cleared out by end of quarter, March 31st. They've got their lowest price ever on hand-scraped bamboo for just $189 a square foot and three-quarter inch pre-finished hickory for an unheard of $259 a square foot. Get free samples at your local store, plus 22-month special financing is available. So go to LumberLiquidators.com now to find the store nearest you. Hurry, everything must go by Monday, March 31st. Breathe it in, kid. Clean, fresh air thanks to these new air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are stronger than ever. And Granger's got over 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from. Just ordered a new batch from Granger.com today. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash air handler or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand. And this is Jessica Armand. Here with your Liberty Beat for March 20th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,326, silver at $20.29, and Bitcoin is trading at $592. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem, operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush, online at SovereignBTC.com. And from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. For your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy at 512-343-6494, or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS 216624. And from the Soleil School, enrolling children from 5 through 10 
in Austin. Visit soleilschool.com. And now the news. Security fixes that address the problems Mt. Gox blamed for the loss of bitcoins were put into place Wednesday. PC World reports that the software, known as Bitcoin QT, has been renamed as Bitcoin Core. The rebranding is intended to show that it runs the core infrastructure of the cryptocurrency's transaction and verification network. According to the release notes, the latest version of Bitcoin software contains more than a half dozen fixes for transaction malleability. A surprise appearance Tuesday at the 2014 TED conference in Vancouver, Canada. Brian Hagen has this story. NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, by use of a remote-controlled satellite robot, appeared on stage to address the conference goers, outlining why he took the risk to make off with 1.7 million documents from the agency. I don't want to harm my government. I want to help my government. Snowden told the crowd that stopping terrorism is not the goal of the NSA's massive surveillance program. The bottom line is that terrorism has always been what we in the intelligence world would call a cover for action. Terrorism is something that provokes an emotional response that allows people to rationalize authorizing uh, powers and programs that they wouldn't give otherwise. Snowden concluded his talk by saying, We don't have to give up our privacy to have good government. We don't have to give up our liberty to have security. I'm Brian Hagan reporting for the Liberty Beat. The Obama administration won't give up the fight on climate change. On Wednesday, the White House revealed a new website serving as a one-stop location for a massive amount of climate change data. The LA Times reports the information contained on the site had previously been spread across the websites of numerous government agencies. The website is President Obama's latest move to deliver on his promise to use his executive authority to confront climate change despite congressional inaction. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, now offering ProPure water filtration, the only gravity-driven all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water as well. Find them in Austin at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. And from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online at massappealinc.com. And from Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for March 20th, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Wednesday, Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen stated the U.S. Central Bank would likely end its bond-buying program by the fall and begin raising interest rates in the first half of 2015. Speaking at her first news conference as chair, Yellen discussed the bond-buying program known as quantitative easing. Yellen stated that the Fed planned to wait a considerable time before pushing up interest rates. When further questioned how long this would actually take, the chairwoman's answer? Six months. The General Counsel and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence told the U.S. Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board that a recently revealed foreign surveillance program is specific with its targets and not bulk data collection. Robert Lidd is quoted here, getting a whole bunch of communications, hanging on to them, and then figuring out later what you want. This is not that. This is a situation where we figure out what we want, and we get that specifically. Lit was responding to a Washington Post report on the Mystic program, which reportedly is capable of recording 100% of a foreign country's telephone calls. You've been listening to The Liberty Beat. Remember, freeing your mind is freeing our world. Jack Daniels announced today its plan to start marketing directly to children, adding, quote, why not? Executives for the whiskey company told reporters that they've already slated dozens of television spots showing 10-year-old children drinking tumblers of Jack and Coke in playgrounds and that the company was planning on, quote, just seeing how it all played out. Every year, Jack Daniels sells millions of dollars of great American whiskey to men and women all over the world. So for our next ad campaign, we basically just thought, hey, why not just start marketing this stuff straight to 10-year-olds? I mean, if they catch us, they catch us, but we'll see how far it goes, and hopefully we can sell some alcohol along the way. Sure, some parents' groups could get upset, especially if we go with our idea of moms serving their kids cranberry jack at snack time. But 
In other news, a doomed rabbit will teach an eight-year-old a lesson about responsibility, and a torrent of soap issues from a wildly unexpected part of the dispenser. Well, that was it. It's all downhill from here, bud. For more, visit theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Um, we'll try that. Free Talk Live. Take control. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can also control the front page of our website by submitting content right there to the front page. In fact, the story that Allie's got to share with us uh, was submitted by someone to our front page. That's right. Freetalklive.com. And uh, so you can go there and you can get interactive in that way. We've also got a webcam. You can watch. You can listen. You can interact with the program and there's been some behind-the-scenes tweaking going on. It's been tweaking. Yeah, it's been kind of an annoyance, but uh, but I've been putting in hours actually to try to get the webcam to work on mobile devices, and I believe I've gotten it working. We're still doing early testing on this. Does that require a lot of bandwidth? I get worried about saying words like that because I'm not it sure. It would require more than listening to the audio stream. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you're on a mobile device and you're restricted on the amount of bandwidth that you can use, as many are, uh, I would recommend not viewing the webcam. I don't think I've ever streamed live video on my phone. Now you should be able to uh, if you've got an Android. With any program that I can think of, like not live video. Oh, but you've done like a YouTube or something like that? So it used to be that if you went to the cam page at cam.freetalklive.com, you'd get an error saying, this stream is not enabled for mobile. Now it should work, or at least it was working on my phone earlier. But the thing that's not working is the live stream app will not work. So I'm still working on trying to figure out why it is that I can go to the web browser and view the stream with the web browser on live stream. Hmm. That's the service provider that's giving us the stream. But through live stream's own app, I can't watch it. So that's my issue right now. So it's kind of working if you actually go to cam.freetalklive.com and you're on a a mobile, either Apple-based or iOS-based or Android device. It should work for you. Uh, So we're still working on that. So 855-450 free. So go to cam.freetalklive.com if you want to give that a try. And if you've got feedback, just go ahead and post it on our Facebook page or send it in an email, ian at freetalklive.com. And that might help a little bit. So, again, toll-free number 855-450-FREE. To start out here this hour, we're going to get to the My Little Pony story, but I had a little bit more on secession since we were talking about it quite a bit in the last hour, and I cited from memory the poll that was about one out of five Americans who support the idea of secession. Turns out I was pretty close on that, 17%, at least in a poll that was published late last year or maybe summertime last year. looks like this article's from September uh, Rasmussen reports National Telephone Survey finds that 17% of American adults say they would vote for their section of their state to secede and form a new state. So not true secession as their, far as... Their section of their state? What yeah. does that mean? So that, I think the poll was... Their county? I think the poll was in reference to some of the things happening with Colorado, for instance, where the northern... Counties in Colorado have been talking about seceding from Colorado and starting a 51st state, essentially North Colorado. Wow. So I think that's what they're referring to here. Uh, t- t- adults say they would vote for their section of their state to secede and form a new state. 70% would vote to keep things the way they are, but another 13% are undecided. Just 22% believe sections of individual states have the right to secede and form a new state. 55% disagree, but a sizable 23% are not sure. Only 24% think it's at least somewhat likely that some states will break up into more than one state over the next 25 years, with 9% who feel it is very likely. 68% believe such breakups are unlikely to occur, and 28% say it is not at all likely. On a broader scale, however, 21% think states have the right to leave the United States and form an independent country. Wow. Which was really the number that that's I was... That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. That's what I was talking about. Uh, 59% don't think states have the right to secede, and 20% are undecided. So that is one out of five Americans, yep. and another one out of five aren't so sure about it. So let's try to get some people who believe in secession all to the same place 
and then see what happens. I think that could be very, very exciting. Uh, by the way, the number of Americans who feel states have the right to secede is down slightly from uh, 24% in June of 2012, but up from 14% in February of 2010. 11% favored their state seceding from the United States in April of 2009. So it appears that the thread or the, uh, the excuse me the trend is going up. 14 or 11 to 14 to 24 and then to 20 percent overall mm-hmm. over time it appears to have been going up so maybe this is an idea whose time has come and uh, and I think that we each should take responsibility those of us who believe in the idea of secession we should take individual responsibility for furthering this idea as much as we possibly can within our lifetimes what do you think is the best way to do that talking with people mm-hmm. at every possible opportunity Whenever some sort of issue is being discussed, whether it's at the workplace or at the dinner table or online in some sort of forum or Facebook group, whenever the issue comes up, whenever any issue comes up that you believe secession could help. So it could be some sort of national thing where the government's doing something really stupid or some other state is doing something dumb and dangerous and for whatever reason, because we're all in the same union, all the states are in the same union that Those of us in this political designation, New Hampshire, are somehow on the hook for some dumb thing that's happening in California. That's that can be another use uh, for the secession. Well, you know, if New Hampshire seceded, we wouldn't have this problem. Right. Uh, So just kind of bring it up and bring it into conversation and treat it like it's a completely normal, completely reasonable idea. And I think that that can start generating conversations and if people are talking about it at work then maybe somebody's going to come home from work and oh what'd you do today honey well we talked about secession at the water cooler (laughs) well Well, secession do you think that i mean i'm sure i'm sure you do this a lot ian where you might bring up secession sort of in a casual way and what kind of response do you get from people is it do you get a hostile response usually or do you usually you know so get confusion. I, I mean, not everyone necessarily thinks of this as like a normal concept. Yeah, um, I can actually answer that question because normally my purview is the liberty movement, right? So right. asking me a question like that typically would not be particular. My answer, my answer would not be very useful because I would be mostly talking to people who are already in the liberty movement. But there was uh, this last summer I went to the Cheshire County Fair and I did an outreach booth there as I'd done the year previous. This year, we did something similar as last year. We had people sign the Shire Society Declaration and take it with them. So if you go to shiresociety.com, you can read the declaration. It's a personal declaration of independence. So it's not about state secession necessarily. But But it's along the same lines. Yeah, it is about individual secession. It's more radical than the idea of just your state seceding. It's about personally distancing yourself from from, the state. From the state, which is to a lot of people part of their identity. If you ask someone who these things weren't just givens, you know, tell me about yourself, then they would start with like their name I'm and American. that they're an American. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, but that brought about conversations about secession as well. So even though state secession wasn't the, the idea that I was there promoting primarily, I did have flyers there for the foundation for New Hampshire independence, which is an organization promoting New Hampshire independence. They don't use the term secession, but we all know what they're actually talking about. Is secession a dirty word? I think that it is. I think that it um, it has that kind of, like you were referencing earlier, that, oh no, violence. They're going to yeah. kill us connotation. That, they already tried that in the 1800s. It's got those connotations to it, whereas maybe declaring independence is a little bit more of a positive thing. But either way, I had those flyers on the table, and so somebody who would sign a personal declaration of independence, I would hand them a flyer. And some of them would kind of take a look at it, and then they would say, secession, huh? Or something like that. They'd make some comment. And of those people, so it's a a fraction of the amount of people I talk to, the ones that I did talk to about New Hampshire secession were positive towards it. There was one person who had some concerns about rolling in the troops, and I answered that with the some of the things we talked about in the last hour, talking about how it'd be really terrible PR and made some counterpoints to their concerns, and they seemed to really think about But you those. didn't get a lot of people saying, well, no, this is part of the sacrifice you make 
as being born in the United States, you have to be with the other states. No, but probably the reason I didn't get those people was because I wasn't leading with a question about secession. Mm -hmm. I was having them sign a declaration of personal independence, Right. many of whom would not sign or many would just walk by. So what all those people would say about secession, I don't know. That's true. Which is where phone polls would really come in handy. 855-450-FREE, that's the toll-free number, but one out of five in America think it's a fine idea so far. It's Free Talk Live. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You got to pay attention to the small things, kid. Small things matter. Small problems become big problems. Take a transformer. Rain leaks into a transformer. Insulation system breaks down. Insulation system breaks down. Copper windings overheat. Copper windings overheat. Transformer blows. Transformer blows. Facility goes dark. Facility goes dark. Kid, you don't want to know what happens next. That's why I use Granger. Granger helps keep small problems from turning into big problems. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. Amanda Bosold here from Midas Resources. Today, March 21st, 2014, gold opened at 1339.50. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1387.93, 693.96 for a half ounce, or 346.98 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's 1387.93, 693.96, and 346.98. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? Again. Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important, with money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day to day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free 
Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want here, toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there that we share with you. We've got a mobile site, as I mentioned previously. You can go to M like mobile.freetalklive.com. That's m.freetalklive.com for quick access to our live streams. And if I can get this mobile thing working correctly, uh, the mobile video stream, then we'll put up a link to that on our mobile site. But that does not that is not there at this moment. You only get links to our live stream and uh, live streams and podcast at m like mobile m.freetalklive.com. If you value your online privacy, something you can get for your smartphone tonight or your desktop or laptop computer is Pro XPN. It's an app that's available for Windows, Mac, o, uh, Mac, iOS, or Android. Plus, if you're a Linux user, you can get instructions from ProXPN as to how to get it to work for you. But what is it? It's a global private network that encrypts all of your online data, meaning that your internet service provider, who right now is probably logging everything that you put into a search box uh, on the internet, everything that every website that you visit, they may be logging that information for up to five years. Yeah, the impression I get is that if it's encrypted, it's vulnerable. Or if it's not, not encrypted, encrypted, it's vulnerable. If it's encrypted, then you're good. You're certainly a lot safer with encryption. Uh, nothing's perfect, right? So somebody with uh, enough computing power and time you could, might be able to. What do you to call it? Decrypting? Decrypt Wait. something? Maybe. I mean, I, I doubt it, though. I mean, this is 512-bit encryption for what I'm, from what I've been told. I picture encryption being basically like shredding and rearranging <sighs> the pieces. Yeah, I guess you could talk about it like that. Sure. Basically. I need to imagine digital things in like physical terms. Yeah. So Pro XPN makes it uh, damn impo- damn near impossible to intercept your data online, and uh, certainly the average uh, hacker who's sniffing Wi-Fi packets is not going to be able to do anything to you with Pro XPN because everything that leaves your computer is encrypted. It's certainly by the Pro a deterrent. XPN software, just like you know, bars in the window aren't fail-proof deterrent. Exactly. ProXPN.com slash FTL for five bucks a month. You can get hooked up with their premium package, which is unlimited bandwidth and no limits on what you can do with their service. So you can privately torrent. For instance, you want to privately torrent, I recommend you connect to their Netherlands server. It's another thing you get with their premium package is you can connect to different servers around the world. And Netherlands has the best privacy protections for people that are torrenting. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, grab the app, get started tonight. You can use their free account if you want to just take it for a trial run, uh, but when you're ready to upgrade to their premium package, use code FTL20. That's FTL20 to save 20% for the lifetime of your account. So when you buy the annual uh, annual plan that breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month for great privacy protections, Pro XPN, they don't keep records of your online habits, uh, your surfing habits. You can get all of that with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Promo code is FTL20. So let's change gears, Allie. We've been talking about secession quite a bit. Uh, but let's go to the schools of America. In this case, do you know where this My Little Pony thing uh, went down? It's a town in North Carolina, Buncombe County. Buncombe County. <laughs> they don't they don't like uh, My Little Pony pony none too much. Some people don't. Apparently, what happened? So uh, there's this nine year old boy who's going to school. Um, let's see. Candler Elementary School in Buncombe County, um, where they didn't like his My Little Pony themed backpack. And you can Google, I Googled pictures of it to see like, you know, what what exactly this backpack entails. Because I know in my school, they always made a big deal about people's attire or whatever they're bringing to school being a distraction. Um, like you can't have shorts or a dress or a skirt that's over yes. two inches above the knee. Or if or you were to like bring that. like something from home that you're carrying, like even if someone had like a skateboard that had too many stickers, I could see them saying that's a distraction in mm. class. You know, anything with cuss words, they always have some justification for censoring the students. But My Little Pony's about as wholesome as far but as But My like- Little Pony is like... It's not necessarily made. It's definitely developed a large adult fan base, at least online. That's probably because the people who are originally fans are now adults. The My Little Pony was in the 1980s. That's right. So kids of the 80s, like myself, and, are now and in the 90s. In their 30s. I also was into My Little Pony. Right. Uh, I don't do know you, if they, do you maybe have any the My dolls. 
the dolls might have been hand me downs. Like maybe it was my sisters, my mm-hmm. little ponies, and I got them. It's hard to tell. You were okay tell. with that though. That's that's okay. Yeah, I, I probably didn't know the difference. So wait, when were you? Uh, when did you get out of My Little Ponies, or do you still have them? Uh, I think that they still are, probably somewhere in storage. And I remember them, and I remember the texture of them, like the soft plastic texture. Mm-hmm. And they got the hair on and them. And the hair. Yeah. And I remember brushing the hair and singing the, my little pony, my <laughs> little pony. And I um, I was hanging out with a girl who's about seven, um, actually Recently? the daughter of some free staters okay. here. And she was watching My Little Pony, and she was showing me her little My Little Pony, and it's different. It's not the same. They made the eyes look different, right? They made the, them like skinnier. And the eyes are different. Hmm. I still think they're cute. I think I think it's still in the spirit of friendship, but yeah. it's it's a different show. There's what about Care Bears? Music. Did you watch Care Bears? Uh, I'd Can never cared that? for Care Bears. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. I know. I don't think I ever watched the show, but I did see the movie a few times because <laughs> I had a, a kid sister as well. I think I have seen the movie before. I'm not sure why. Just an excuse to go to the theater. Um, so I'll just read. The story is from the Daily Caller. But this is a boy. A this is a boy. boy. This is a young boy. And what I what I understand is I don't know if when I used to watch My Little Pony, I never thought of, I probably did think it was like a girly thing. But I think now it's kind of like some of these shows that I don't necessarily, like the humor is not necessarily um, gender specific. Not that humor would be. I don't know. It's like it, it could appeal to all different types. Well, I mean, you're right. Of course. The boys... Just happens standard to be pretty. Boy. Right, right. Well, the the standard boys uh, cartoons are still going to be the ones with the violence, right? Like Transformers and GI Joe. Those were the two big ones when I was in school. But that doesn't mean that all boys are interested in that, right? I mean, the, the I think there's pseudo violence in My Little Pony, right? I don't know. I haven't seen a My Little Pony in decades. I think they get angry. The ponies get angry at one another. Yeah, I think they do. Okay. But is there like an evil pony that comes in and, I haven't and seen tries the new to episodes. like take over? What's the conflict in a My Little Pony episode? Like even with the uh, with the Smurfs, there was pop. There was the old guy, what Gargamel, who would come in and he would try to do bad things to the Smurfs. So was there an antagonist of so some sort? It looks like at least My Little Ponies? smoke comes out of their ears sometimes because they're mad. Yes, they look. It looks like they do get angry. And like almost like. See, I don't know enough about the the cartoon. Are are you really? You don't remember if there was an antagonist? It's, the... I'm telling you, Ian. It's a different cartoon now. I separate them in but my mind. Tell but me I about don't... your experience. Well, I'm trying to remember. I don't think that. I think that it was much more tame before. Because like I can remember. I feel like I just watched a movie. I don't even know that I watched some kind of series. Really? I think I just watched the movie over and over again. Okay. See, I don't know enough about the My Little Ponies. My sister had some, and so that's kind of my experience with it. I've seen them, so I'm familiar with them. I'm familiar with the theme song, so I know I must have seen some sort of portion <laughs> the of- The one I was singing before? Yeah. I, I, I must have seen some sort of portion of the show back in the day, but I remember absolute zero about what the contents were. 855-450 free. I bet Wikipedia knows. 855-450-3733. But there's conflict at this school. That's and that's right. what we want to talk about coming up here. Although, if you want to talk about 80s cartoons, that's fine, too. You can bring up anything you want here on Free Talk Live at 855-450-FREE or Skype in at username lrn.fm. Self-reliance. Survival supplies. Survival skills. National experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, a must-be-there event. Presented by American Living, this massive expo will include special guests. David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Here, Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network. Along with many other leading national experts. Learn life saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. 
Free Talk Live. I'm sure I can speak for many of thousands. I don't fear illegals. I don't want them here and their filth that they bring with and the disease that they bring with. All the people who work in the stores and the markets and the restaurants are overwhelmingly Hispanic. And they seem very clean and be doing a fine job here. And I've never heard anything about problems with disease. For you to defend the illegal immigrants, and I'm not sure, as I said earlier, which host at what time is very condescending. Um, Madam, I will defend anybody that is peaceful and looking for a better life for themselves. We well, already pointed I out. I, I don't defend them. I, I wish that people like you. You would say have that to Mexicans are filthy and you call me condescending, lady? You say no, they're disease ridden and filthy and they, I'm condescending? And they are. And they are. And You're I outrageous. Do You're out of here. Thank you for the she's, call. She's had all her rope. She's hung herself. Free Talk Live. Seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves. Toll free at 855-453. Especially if you're a brony. I think we'd like to hear from you tonight. Even though we're talking about My Little Pony and the backpack of the My Little Pony brand being apparently a a source of controversy at a school in North Carolina. We'll continue that story here in a few moments. Also, of course, you're welcome to join us. And you can bring up anything that you want here 855 free is the toll-free number. We've got Skype. Skype on in to username lrn.fm. And most people, like you, want to get ahead in life. Nearly all of Free Talk Live's listeners would like to persuade more people toward the idea of freedom. But did you know that some of the solutions that claim to help you grow as a person actually backfire? The good news is that 70 years of science shows that even the best leaders can get better but only if they practice in ways that actually work. Dr. Matt Barney, the founder of Leader Amp, has coached and taught thousands of successful leaders around the world for the last 20 years using the latest science of what works. Dr. Barney has drafted blueprints for a new smartphone application that will measure you and tailor a customized developmental plan, some of which will be pushed to your smartphone. That's cool. His vision is to build a community who can access approaches that really work and support each other's development as leaders. Uniquely, it will also allow you to compare your leadership with famous historical leaders like Gandhi or Steve Jobs to help you see that they weren't perfect but overcame their own limitations with practice. The app isn't ready yet. It's currently being built. But if you want to help advance an approach to grow freedom lovers' persuasion skills... 
we would love for you to join the community. Go and pre-order on Indiegogo and help them out at leaderamp.freetalklive.com. Of course, you can go learn more there as well. Leaderamp.freetalklive.com. It's a short URL that we made that will take you to their Indiegogo campaign. Amp your leadership. That's leaderamp.freetalklive.com. So let's continue here, and we can talk more about the, kind of the peripherals. You actually did a little bit of research, Allie. I did. Uh, You're wondering the what the what the conflict was in the My Little Pony movie that I used to watch as a child. Well, first we weren't sure what the situation was with My Little Pony in the 1980s, and thankfully Wikipedia exists, so we don't have to sit here and sound uninformed. Uh, we went and looked, and it looks like there was the movie that you were talking that you're going to tell us about. In, in 1986, but also during the 80s, there apparently were a, a few, no more than a few, kind of TV specials. It wasn't a regular series or anything like Transformers or She-Ra or something like that, some right. of these 80 car- 80s cartoons. So there were some cartoons produced, but nothing regular. And then there was this movie, which right. the conflict was what? The conflict, well, I wanted to give you an idea of, because we were like, we were like, are there bad characters? Or are there, you know, was it the conflict fairly tame and i remember it being more tame than i guess it actually was um there's a bad one uh hidia the bad pony okay and she decides to make the smooths an unstoppable the smooths the smooths an unstoppable purple ooze that will de- that will bury <laughs> and destroy everything in its path it will also make anyone who is splashed by it grumpy and willful hmm. her daughters go and collect the ingredients for the smooths leaving out the Flume, an ingredient that they are afraid of. Hidia releases the smooths, which rages towards the dream castle. All the ponies are forced to evacuate as the castle and surrounding land is submerged by smooths. Oh, so the smooths and Hidia would be the two. Yeah, those uh, are bad, definitely bad, bad things. things you want to watch out for. And then there's apparently there's a new series that's been going on since 2010, which actually is an animated series. So they finally do have a My Little Pony uh, television series. And then I guess that's what they redesigned, the, where they, the ponies look different than you recall? Yes, they look different, and they're almost kind of like Power Rangers because they all hmm. have... I'm reading from whatisabrony.com, a show a website <laughs> that you found, in, and it says the show is centered around six... This is a series, so it's not a movie. So I guess you get some more character development, but um, it's centered around six main characters known as the... known um, to the fans as the main six, main spelled like a horse's mane, mm-hmm. or a pony's mane in this case. Each of the ponies have a very unique personality as well as a magical element known as the elements of harmony. Together they are able to harness the powers to defeat evil villains and myth- mythical beasts, be it through the sheer power of magic or through more conventional means. So different episodes may have different antagonists in that particular show. Like I, I was reading something about that on Wikipedia about there being a dragon or something like that in one show, etc. So there you go, a little more information. These about These ponies have the jobs, homes, friends, and hobbies apparently. <laughs> so let's go back to the story, however, which sort of sparked this side conversation about the pop culture yes. of uh, My Little Pony and get into the reality where. Young boy, what, 10, 11 years old, something like that? Uh, I believe nine, year, nine, nine years, years old. Nine years old. Okay. Um, so he went to school. He had a, a My Little Pony his backpack. His name is Grayson Bruce. Um, and yes, he went to school at this Candler Elementary School in Boncombe County. Um, and they told him that, or at least the mother says, that the school said that the boy needed to leave his My Little Pony paraphernalia at home. Mm. Um the boy's mother, Noreen Bruce, said school officials asserted that the My Little Pony trappings are a trigger for a bully, quote, and had become too distracting to the other students. Hmm. So they use the same excuse my school would use um, in the past. So the claim is that the bullies just can't help but bully him because he has a My Little Pony backpack on. And so rather than be true he's to inviting, himself. He's inviting the bullying. Right, just like a woman will invite a rape uh, by wearing a short skirt, right? Actually, it's interesting because that's basically the same um, same point that the mother made. There's a quote from her saying a lunchbox. He apparently has a My Little Pony lunchbox. Uh-huh. Dedicated, and a backpack. Dedicated brony. Um, saying a lunchbox is a trigger for bullying. You might as well say a short skirt is a trigger mm-hmm. for rape, she told the news station. Which we know is ridiculous. Yeah, she says it's flawed logic. It doesn't even make sense. Right, and besides that, uh, they're telling this young man that he needs to conform. He should not be himself 
he should look like a normal boy looks. I think this is something that a lot of people, a lot more people than you would think, struggle with. Like, I feel like it's very Conforming. obvious to you and I that you are not, of you are, like, the, the victim is not guilty of, you know, being bullied. That yeah. in this case, or like, you know, someone who's raped. Uh, they would have to change. If someone said that they were raped and it was clear, you know, you're not... It's like, no, we're not arguing whether or not you were coerced into sex. We're arguing whether or not you invited it upon yourself. Like, that's a ridiculous conversation to even mm-hmm. have. But some people really do feel like you might do certain things to deserve violence, you know, besides like retaliatory, you know, self-defense that maybe acting a certain way, saying certain things or dressing a certain way invites um, bullying upon yourself. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, that's cool at all. I, I, you're saying that there are maybe more people than we might think that think that way? Uh, well, I think that it's mostly bullies who say this kind of thing. Well, They're justifying their own actions. Mm-hmm. Well, either way, the school seemed to be taking the side of the I think the school this. is probably used to doing a lot of bullying of their own because they send kids home probably for wearing the wrong thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, they're used to telling people what, what they should be wearing to school and what not. And in this case, they told this boy um, that his... You know, my little pony paraphernalia were a distraction in that it was inviting the bullying. And I would like to find the part where. And he was told like, to not bring that paraphernalia to yes. school from that point forward or else. There's actually been an update, though, where I think this story got a lot of news attention. It, it made it on national news. Glenn Beck was talking about it as yep. well. So it's actually it doesn't surprise me so much. But there's been an update. Um I'm trying to see when it's from, but the school has actually, I guess, recently, like March 22nd, is a story um, that the school revoked their decision, I guess, to tell the boy he can bring the backpack to school now. I wonder how, what that's like after you've gotten to be on TV and talked about how you've been bullied and then coming back to school. Same kids who bullied him are going to be there and he's got his backpack. What I wonder what the, the teacher can't let that happen. Otherwise, well, it's... Bullying usually doesn't happen with the teachers around. That's true. I'm sure it's very sneaky. It <laughs> so, might get worse. That's kind of, that's something that's to consider. That's another good question. Would all the national attention result in less bullying a for this young man? Because, well, now these bullies know that they've got mainstream media maybe coming down on them. Or maybe they're just not aware enough to be aware of, you know, that, that that's happening. Kids, it also speaks to something about putting all kids in a place where they don't really want to be and not letting them choose who they're around. Well, right. The best solution for mom and dad here is get their son out of this government school hellhole and put him in a place that actually respects his choices. It really fosters bullying, the whole environment. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts on this or whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and JCPenney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. 
product. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Calling all makeup lovers. Bare Minerals Foundation just won its ninth Glammy Award for Best Prestige Foundation. And to celebrate, we're offering risk-free trials to all women nationwide. That's right. Every woman who calls right now can get a full-size risk-free trial of our number one selling foundation. Plus, a free five-piece makeup set. For yours, call 1-800-961-4764. This is an exclusive, radio-only offer you don't want to miss. Bare Minerals Foundation gives you flawlessly beautiful coverage with a no-makeup feel. And it's clinically proven to promote clearer, healthier-looking skin for all skin types. No wonder it's won nine Glammys in a row. And now you can try it for yourself. Call now to find out how you can participate in our nationwide risk-free trial and join the millions who've already tried Bare Minerals Foundation and fallen in love with their skin again. Plus, we'll send you a free five-piece makeup set, our gift to you. Hurry, don't miss this exclusive radio-only offer. 1-800-961-4764. 1-800-961-4764. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can share with us whatever you want to discuss here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Skype in, username lrn.fm. We're talking about the My Little Pony crackdown in North Carolina, (laughs) where one young boy age nine has been told, had been told by school officials that he was to no longer bring My Little Pony uh, accessories like backpack right. or lunchbox to school. And then they reverse their position. We can get into the details on that. Want to hear what you think? Let's go to Matt in Utah. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Allie. Hello, Matt. Hi, how you guys doing? Hey, you listening to KZNU there in Utah. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, well, I was wanted, I want to jump back. I'm sorry this isn't my little, my little pony. It was an idea about the session. Oh, okay. Cool on that for just a second yeah you can talk about whatever you'd like here on free talk live go ahead oh, uh, it's okay if you don't want to admit to the world that you're actually a brony matt go ahead with, uh, with your thoughts on it. <laughs> maybe ponyville uh, will secede <laughs> i don't have a my little pony but I'll you are my it. little pony <laughs> go ahead so, your thoughts anyway, on secession uh, sir one of the things that one of the things i thought about with secession i was listening to you earlier is that uh if you were to plan it correctly you would have to do it at the state level. You'd have to um, elect the right state officials mm-hmm. to make your your state liquid, or I think that's the word, not solvent, but liquid, so that when you were to secede, all of the federal lands that are owned by the government, you could purchase hmm. to avoid... So the reason is that on the east of the Mississippi maybe 10 to 20 percent of your state land is owned by the federal government oh really it's true yep and so they claim i mean although i would i would argue that uh their claim of ownership is invalid because they took it by force you're talking about the land mass right not like no i'm talking about uh for example in utah like buildings and stuff like federal parks and things oh okay yeah we're close to we're close to 60 percent here 
Yeah, out west, it's really bad. The feds claim ownership of huge swaths of land out we west. Have, we have Bryce Canyon. We have all the national parks. We have Zion, you know, all of canyon lands. National parks. We have Bureau of Land Management, uh, you know, national forests, national park service. We have uh, military establishments, military gunnery bases. So if you were to actually want to secede correctly, what you'd have to do is elect the right people to balance the budget for your state so that you could get ready to purchase or I think that would be the last uh, thing on anyone's mind in secession is thinking about purchasing because in order to purchase a piece of property, you have to have a willing seller. And I don't think the federal government is going to just sit down at a negotiating table and say, well, you'd like to buy uh, the White well, Mountains, would you? At the point well, where they might be... If there is a timing element to the, you know, if there's like a, could be a strategy behind secession, if you're thinking about it as far as like, you know, in the future, we expect the government to be, you know, effectively insolvent. Like they don't, they've grown so big beyond their means that now they just can't really afford to nation build anymore and they can barely Mm -hmm. afford to enforce their own laws here at home. So, you know, that might be a good I'm sorry. We'll I was just going to say that might be a good opportunity to offer, you know, like, well, we'll buy some of this land. Purchase, Maybe that'll help with some yeah. of your problems. And then five, also five we're seceding. On a dollar. You know, five cents on a dollar for the property. Presuming they're willing to sell, but to me it's it's irrelevant. I mean, uh, it would be, look, we're leaving and we're taking your property with us. I don't think there would need to be any that's, kind of negotiation. That's the way we would look at it in Utah. And that's the way Texas would look at it, and that's the way most of the Western states would look at it and say, right. "We're going to assume we're going to assume the in- income of Zion National Park." You know, you get the state would probably run it better anyway. I well, mean, if uh, yeah, yeah but, who would own it? Would the state just consume ownership of it? In I that would case? think so. Yeah, I'd rather see a private uh, owner. I'd rather see a business owner come to them and buy it. Sure, but any well, level all, of decentralization. All the national parks, just so you know, all the national parks in the United States. There's a contract with a property uh, management company called Zantera. Starts with an X. They have the contract with the, with the government for hmm. all of the national parks in the United States. Well, that sounds like it's They're loaded with pork. Concession. So you'd have to buy them out, or they walk away. I, I was just my, my point was that if you were to plan it correctly, you would have a liquid asset in your own state. To take on that contingency, you know. Yeah. To, no, I see where I see where you're coming from. And uh, walk, anything else do you want to share tonight, Matt? It's all got to be taken care of by your state attorneys. That's it's all going to come down to lawyers. Well, actually, in the case of New Hampshire, it would be uh, it would actually be a constitutional amendment, and then the people of New Hampshire would actually have to vote on that. Somebody'd have to state write up the language, um, and maybe you'd want to have an attorney con- do that. Are you talking about the state constitution, right? Yes, uh, according to the New Hampshire State Constitution, they would have to vote to to amend the Constitution, and then uh, people mm-hmm. would have to vote on that proposed amendment for secession to happen mm-hmm. here, as I understand it. And then, and then lawyers would have to get involved with the United States of America. Well, yeah, I wonder what. I imagine they would. Would they try to? Would the federal government try to hold some kind of trial to decide if they're going to recognize the secession? Who knows what they would do in response to that? And there's a whole range of possible responses, but I don't think that we should be concerned with what the federal government does. We should just focus on seceding and getting popular support for that idea and then let the chips fall where they may. Thanks, Matt, for your call tonight. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Let's go to Dave. He's in Nevada. You're on Free Talk Live. Dave. Hey, uh, I just first wanted to say... um I was actually made fun of at work today for my little pony backpack, so I can relate <laughs> to the uh, kid. So, are you a brony, um, or is that are you just? Ch- no, just I'm, I'm just kidding. No, I, the only thing I know about little ponies is that you know when I was a kid, there was a cartoon, and I did hear when I used to listen to Howard Stern that whole brony thing. And those guys are nuts. They have like conventions, and they, they're really why are they nuts? <laughs> I mean, they, they're into something. It's their it's their well, fanaticism or whatever. Everybody's got their thing. It's a little thing. creepy. It's it's a little creepy. Is put it that way? Why is it creepy yeah, well, compared I mean, to, can... say, someone who's into sports? Good point. Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's up to them, whatever makes you happy, but yeah. Yeah, it's not my thing. Okay. It's, like, it's similar to when you see a guy wearing a pink shirt, and it seems like 
regardless of who it is, other guys have to notice it. Like whether it's saying like, I like that shirt or <laughs> what is he, some kind of queer wearing a pink shirt? It's like it gets this <laughs> reaction out of guys. Maybe mm. the bronies like, you know, to stir things up and get the reaction. Yeah. So, Dave, what else did you want to share tonight? Um, what I want to talk about is in uh, locally here in Las Vegas, um, they're actually claiming that uh, this was the headline in, in an article yesterday, which was like front page on on the Review Journal website, is that uh, marijuana brings violence to neighborhoods. So <laughs> they had some uh, they had some grow house, and unless you buy it from the government, of course. But they had some grow houses, I guess, and this happened in January. So this article is not even about something that happened. The, the article is just about the fact that. These grow houses bring violence. It showed these pictures of these two guys with long hair and tattoos who were arrested in January. And that you should, you know, if you're renting your house, you should check up on people to make sure they're not doing anything illegal. You know, neighbors. Well, it's true that the the black market does bring violent situations pretty often because people have to. Not so much in marijuana, though. I mean, the marijuana trade isn't that violent. Yeah, it can happen, but. I guess it depends on. Where you are, If right? you've got a lot of it, then there's a chance that somebody may try to rob you. Or if you've got a grow house and somebody finds out who might not like that, then they yeah. could do something. Um, so what you're saying is there was some sort of violent incident around a grow house? No, there wasn't. Oh, They're there wasn't. just saying, you know, it brings violence. I mean, and if it does bring any violence, it's, it's because they're making it illegal. Um, well, but right. it, it, even in... Sorry, even in the article, they mentioned that, oh, we're not going after anybody for medical marijuana. We're just going after these people that illegally, you know, grow it. So it just seems like a propaganda thing to say, like, totally. okay, you know, if you know about any grow houses in your neighborhood, it brings violence. So call the police immediately and check <laughs> up on people you're renting. The idea of for. growing plants is going to bring violence is absolutely absurd. If you're doing a marijuana grow operation correctly, you don't tell anybody about it. And then nobody finds out because if nobody finds out, then nobody's going to get violent. Nobody's going to come in and raid or risk not raid, but nobody's going to rob a marijuana grow operation if they don't know it exists. It could very well bring violence. And that's usually because the cops are showing up by your door and shooting dogs and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Dave, thanks for sharing your call and thoughts tonight. Always appreciate hearing from you at 855-450 free. Let's go to recording master Tim on Skype. You're on free talk live. Hi. Hey, you're on the air. Uh, um, are we going to a break now? Well, we are, but what did you want to talk about? Uh, I don't know if I already had time to say much before the break comes, because I, I hear the music. All right. So, well, anyway, I was trying to get him to say he's wanted to talk about Bitcoin. Hang on, Tim. We'll uh, come <laughs> back here in moments. More with your thoughts. You don't have to worry about the break. We'll take care of that. Hour number three is on the way. This is Free Talk Live. More after the news. The flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have over 8 million square feet of top quality flooring that must be cleared out by end of quarter, March 31st. They've got their lowest price ever on hand-scraped bamboo for just $189 a square foot and three-quarter inch pre-finished hickory for an unheard of $259 a square foot. Get free samples at your local store, plus 22-month special financing is available. So go to LumberLiquidators.com now to find the store nearest you. Hurry, everything must go by Monday, March 31st. Quantum Vibe, it's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed, with brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com from Big Head Press. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, March 24th, 2014. Radio VR News. The search for survivors continues in a mudslide in Washington state that has claimed at least eight lives. Correspondent Sandy Kozell reports on what Chief Travis Hotz of Snohomish County has to say about the tragedy. This is still a rescue mission until we determine otherwise. Rescue crews worked into the night in rural Washington state, searching for survivors of yesterday's massive deadly landslide. Snohomish County Fire District 21 Chief Travis Hotz says people were heard yelling for help from within a huge mud and debris field. I was at awe. I've never seen anything like it in my 20-year fire service career. The slide blocked the North Fork of the Stillaguamish River, which prompted an evacuation notice because water was rising rapidly behind the debris. I'm Sandy Kozell. Washington Governor Jay Inslee, who took an aerial tour of the mudslide site, says the news may be grim for some who are waiting for loved ones to be found. The devastation, of course, is, is overwhelming. Um, and I had a sense that uh, we, uh, we're going to have some hard news here. President Obama is in the Netherlands this morning, starting a week-long European trip under the shadow of Russia's presence in southern Ukraine. Vitals correspondent Mark Smith has more. This trip was already jam-packed even before Russia took Crimea. A nuclear security summit in The Hague, talks with EU chiefs in Brussels, a visit with Pope Francis at the Vatican, and a meeting with Saudi King Abdullah in Riyadh. But now, as the Allies worry about Russian troops massing near eastern Ukraine, there's an emergency G7 meeting here tonight. While that won't include Russia, the 53-nation summit on nuclear safety and terrorism will. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's attending, and we'll see Secretary of State John Kerry in the latest bid to defuse the Ukraine crisis. Mark Smith with the president, The Hague. Correspondent Jerry Bootlender tells us the administration is rejecting calls to provide arms to Ukraine, preferring diplomacy and sanctions it says are working. The administration says the two rounds of sanctions that have been imposed on Russia are having an impact. National Security Advisor Susan Rice pointing to a downgrade in Russia's credit rating by one of the major agencies. The president could impose sanctions that target certain parts of the Russian economy. Rice refused to say what might prompt such a move. Millions of people in the U.S. will remain uninsured despite this week's final frenzied push to sign them up under the health care law. Correspondent Ross Simpson explains. Researchers say many of the uninsured just don't know much about the health overhaul and its March 31st deadline for enrolling in plans that can yield big discounts. An Associated Press GFK poll found that only one-fourth of the uninsured had tried to sign up through the state or federal insurance marketplaces that are also known as exchanges by late January. If they don't enroll in time, many will face a fine and be locked out of the subsidized plans until next year. Ross Simpson, Washington. Thousands of New Yorkers are likely to see flood insurance premiums rise as the government faces out subsidized flood insurance nationally in some of the most at-risk areas. Correspondent Julie Walker has more. President Obama signed a law Friday that put a halt to an overhaul of the national flood insurance program that was supposed to end subsidized insurance for homes and businesses that were built in flood zones. The bill merely delays many rate hikes. Data analyzed by the Associated Press shows about 49,000 primary homeowners in New York State will face annual rate hikes up to 18 percent. About 10,700 businesses and owners of second homes will face annual increases of 25 percent until they switch over to a risk-based rate. Julie Walker, New York. The state of Michigan is going to wait before deciding whether to recognize new same-sex marriages in the state. 
Ed Dunhue explains why. About 300 couples got married Saturday in four counties in Michigan. A federal appeals court judge later placed a stay on a federal judge's decision Friday, overturning the state's 2004 constitutional ban on same-sex marriage. Governor Rick Snyder's office says state agencies won't immediately recognize those marriages, but will wait until the case is resolved. The decision blocks Michigan County clerks from issuing new same-sex marriage licenses until the Court of Appeals decides whether to extend the stay. That's expected no sooner than Wednesday. I'm Ed Donahue. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. During a curt Skype session earlier this afternoon, local Williamsburg resident, 29-year-old Cormac Flanagan, reminded his mother to, quote, try and be more careful after she forgot to pay his cell phone bill. Mom, the phone company called today about my cell phone bill. Oh, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. No, m Mom, I'm not mad, but you had to stay on top of these things, you know. I know, you I know. You can't keep waiting until the last night like this. Well, I don't want to have to keep reminding you every month. You know, I need my phone. I use it. All, every every day, I need I know, my phone. I'm I know, constantly I know. I'm, using I'm so bad. I'm, I'm really sorry. sorry. I'll, I'll get on it. Today. All right, you know, just so you know, you know, this really easy thing you can do. You know, there's this online auto pay. Just deducts in your bank account every month. Yeah, quite yeah. easy. I, I know. Okay. I know. I, I know. It's fine. I know it's, how it's, it's, fine. it's fine. It's fine. Just don't let it become a pattern. You know, I know. I know. I know you can do better than this. Uh, okay, I, I promise. I'll get on it today. Okay. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in to show name you are. Excuse me. Show username is lrn.fm. That is what you will search for to find Free Talk Live and then send a contact request. The reason the show uh, the show name is lrn.fm instead of Free Talk Live is because we are from the lrn.fm studios and other shows like Ali's show. That's right. ALP have the ability to use the very same Skype software. Which so, we've done before. Right. To have so, guests on or callers. Yeah, and it wouldn't make sense for that to be called Free Talk Live. So our username is lrn.fm and Ali's show is ALP, which stands for what? Well, it changes every week. So it depends on the topic. Every week we go in depth into one topic and um, it's a two-hour show, um, Saturday nights, and like last week we talked about marriage, and that was oh, an interesting you discussion. Mean this past Saturday. Yes, yeah. yes, and um, neither Elle and I are married, but it's interesting because growing up as a young girl, your marriage is like sort of the be-all, end-all. It's if, your day. Yeah, it's the best day of your life. <laughs> after you're Do you believe 16. that still? No. When did you stop believing that? Uh, I stopped believing that when I realized that they don't just like provide you with a marriage that you have to like find <laughs> someone's gonna pay for you it. You have to find someone that you're willing to be with for the rest of your life yeah. first. That's a, probably the biggest hurdle, and then you have to find the money for all that. And and then you hear about people getting eloped or going to the courthouse and getting married and not wanting all the fuss. And then you realize that all the fuss is kind of stressful. And I was recently yeah. hearing someone talk about you know having wanting to have their dream wedding and it all going wrong and how Ugh. disappointing that has to be. And I know in my past, whenever I hype myself up for something, I'm always disappointed. So Yeah, you create big expectations. Yeah. So, so it was more like a, a sort of overtime thing, maybe between when you were a teenager and, and an adult that you kind of realized that Probably. marriage wasn't what it was cracked up to yeah, be? Yeah, I think when I was like 16, I was like, I'm never getting married. Now, are you talking about the ceremony or marriage itself? Um, well, I guess... So if you'd asked me when I was 16, I would have thought the, th the the wedding ceremony and the being married and the legal obligations and divorce were all one thing that you couldn't have. Like, I didn't think outside the box too much. I didn't think, well, there could be someone who I'd want to, you know, have some kind of contract with in a relationship that seemed like a marriage. I never thought of the idea of like a stateless marriage or like having your own unique marriage. And we kind of got into that a little bit on ALP towards the end. Talking alternatives about to marriage? alternatives to marriage, you know, a lot of a lot more couples um, are turning to cohabitation. It's not it's growing in the United States, but even more so in other countries. Like apparently the U.S. is more obsessed with marriage than hmm. any other place. 
It, it has been quite the tradition here, and there are the ceremony, plenty of people. The ceremony, everything know. about it. And, you know, there's so all kinds of... So would you say, of, what was Ellen's per- perspective? She was your co-host. Yeah, Ellen, yeah. Ellen was almost even harder on marriage than I really? was. Yeah. That's interesting. So we actually, I was talking with Ellen over the weekend and invited her to come be a part of Free Talk Live on Friday nights. That is so exciting. At least on a temporary basis, because we do know Derek J is going to be coming back and I'm going to want to make sure that he has room to come on to the show. But I think having Ellen, Ellen on and for, Derek a, would be great. for a few weeks would be would be great. Well, because right now Daryl's on uh, oh, okay. on Friday nights. But yeah, maybe maybe Daryl wants to take a break and uh, who knows what it will be in the future. But we'll I think see. it'd be nice because Ellen's, I don't think, ever been on Free Talk Live. She hasn't. So that'll be fun. So we'll have Allie on Mondays and Ellen on Fridays. That's awesome. Starting hopefully this week. It'll be ALP two nights a week on Free Talk Live. Exactly, or at least half of ALP. That's Let's right. go to uh, the phones here. Oh, by the way, check out Allie's show at ALPshow.com. That's you right. You can go there and download you can get the episodes. archive. This yep. week's archive is up already. I That's right. It. So ALPshow.com. And we have a Bitcoin jar now I wanted to announce. So, yeah. so you can get that on there, too. You want to tip Allie, you can do that. Let's go to uh, Recording Master Tim. He is on the line, and he's from Wisconsin on Skype. Hello, Tim. Go ahead with your thoughts. Hi. Uh, first, I'm glad if you're not getting too much um, background noise of the computer on, on my computer desktop. And, nope. Uh, All good. Go ahead with I, your thoughts, and, Tim. And, and, and I just also thought, I, I just also wanted to quick say that um, I, I'm, I'm glad that I hear you back on the show, Ian, because uh, even though the other guys on the show are good, uh, I, I feel I... I miss when you're when you're um, not on the show. You it's mean, not the same without uh, Ian. You mean true. the one day that I wasn't on because I'm not on Sundays? Wasn't there like a time oh. where um, it was you were at the Bitcoin conference in Texas? But that was a while yeah, there ago. Was a, that was like two or three weeks ago at this point. But yeah, well, thank you, Tim. I appreciate the compliment. What was it you wanted to share but, with our about, audience about, tonight? Uh, yeah, about Bitcoin, uh, I, I really feel that I, I really would have liked to have, you know, been buying Bitcoin. I, I heard that there was a time that it it was twenty seven cents a Bitcoin, and I I feel I would have liked to have been buying it when it was that low. I right. think we but all then, would have liked the, that. The, the only the only thing that I couldn't help you know, always feeling or, or always thinking is is where was I going to spend around where I am because there's no businesses around where I am you know getting getting on board yet with with Bitcoin and and now I re- think I remember hearing you say it went up to five hundred dollars a Bitcoin and, and and I'm like well how am I going to ever able to uh, afford that. Oh, know, it's in easy. The so here's money. how you here's how you can do it. You can just go to cashintocoins.com and you can actually buy less than a Bitcoin. I think that some people maybe misunderstand and they think they have to buy a, a whole Bitcoin. Uh, if you don't have the money for a full Bitcoin, it's no big deal. If you you know if you have a hundred dollars that you can put into Bitcoin, you can get a fifth of a Bitcoin uh, or whatever a hundred dollars will buy you at the time that you buy it. So you can have with Bitcoin you can break it down to, I think, eight decimal points. So if you want to, you can buy 0.001 Bitcoin, and that's not a problem. And that will, you know, if Bitcoin continues to increase in value, if you buy a fifth of a Bitcoin, so, you know, uh, 0.2 of a, of a Bitcoin, then, you know, that $100 worth might become $1,000 worth over the next year. We don't know what's going to happen, or, you know, the, the value could go to zero as well. But my point being is you don't have there's not a minimum amount necessarily. Well, I suppose if you want to buy point zero 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 one, then you're gonna have a tough time finding someone who's willing to spend the time to sell you that. But with cashintocoins.com, you can buy as little as forty bucks worth. In fact, if you buy less than forty dollars worth at cashintocoins.com, there's absolutely no fee that is charged to you. So really it's 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 totally easy to get in at small value. I do wish dollars. that there was I'm sure that there's something like this out there where, you know, it's like a inter- little introduction. Like, you set up your Bitcoin wallet, you're excited about Bitcoin, but maybe you don't know a lot of people to trade with in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, some kind of gambling site or, like, small play. Like, something where you can trade Bitcoins at small amounts that people treat like it's nothing because it's so divisible that, like, if someone, you know, it's, like, basically the equivalent of, you know, liking a Facebook photo, like that kind of thing, where you send someone a Satoshi, which is the smallest unit of Bitcoin, is really nothing. It's less than one penny. So a long time ago, Ali, there used to be the Bitcoin faucet. And and when I say a long time ago, I mean in Bitcoin years, so like two years right. ago. Uh, Gavin Andreessen, one of the, uh, the kind of, not the founder, but one of the early programmers and main programmers behind Bitcoin had a 
a website called Bitcoin. I think it was called Bitcoin Faucet, and maybe I'm mis misremembering. It doesn't. Uh, right now, if you go to BitcoinFaucet.com, it forwards you to LocalBitcoins.com. But it used to be that you could like get a Bitcoin <laughs> or half a Bitcoin or something like that back when they were worth five cents or something like that. Right. And so you had to keep adjusting the amount that the Bitcoin faucet would dispense because it kept getting more and more expensive <laughs> to run this program. But yeah, it used to be that you could just go to a website and then click a button and put in your Bitcoin address That's and it awesome. would send you a fraction of a Bitcoin or well, something like that. Well, I think like I like the idea of people competing or playing for Bitcoin, you know, that there's some object to some game and getting it. There's plenty of those. Satoshi Dice, Satoshi Circle, those are two of them. So, Tim, any other thoughts you wanted to share tonight? Uh, um, just one one um, question I still had in mind yet to ask about Bitcoin is j just to make sure I understand right. So, like, if uh, Bitcoin is five hundred dollars a Bitcoin now, th that's how much is that's how how much um, worth a person can also buy with it five hundred dollars worth of a stuff with it. Sure. Right? Well, well, like with anything, uh, what you can buy for it depends on what someone else is willing to sell. Uh, so whatever that price is, and it's it's right around now. I think uh, if you go to BitcoinAverage.com, you can pull up a good average global price for Bitcoin. It's actually about five hundred and seventy-five dollars at the moment for one Bitcoin, and and usually on most exchanges you can get close to that amount, uh, right around that amount for for your Bitcoin. Thanks for the call, Tim. I appreciate hearing from you. If you want to learn yep. more about Bitcoin, go to WeUseCoins.com. It's a great introduction there. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. We talk live, bring up what you want right here toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype in to username LRN.FM. That's user LRN.FM. Do send a contact request first, though, otherwise it won't work. So send the contact request, you'll be approved. And then you can connect with us on Skype easily. And if you get the if you got the choice, go ahead and use Skype, because almost almost always it'll sound better than your cell phone or home phone. Our number here again, 855 450 free. We were talking about bitcoins and had some uh, some newbie questions, and that, that, that's totally fine. Uh, everybody's a newbie to Bitcoin at some point. We use coins.com is probably the go-to point for someone who is completely in the dark about Bitcoin. And so, there's always people out there who are really into Bitcoin who will like walk you through things. I that's think that's a really cool, true. a cool aspect of the community. Like I haven't, I haven't really seen that in a lot of other things where there are people who are understanding if you if you don't know a lot about Bitcoin and they're actually kind of excited by that, like, can I help you learn about this Bitcoin sure, thing? Sure, because everybody that you help learn about Bitcoin is another potential user of Bitcoin, thereby making Bitcoin that much more solid of a currency. Right. So everybody has a, a personal interest because we want to see Bitcoin succeed. We want more people to accept and to understand Bitcoin. And it, it helps when they understand that there was, an, an, I guess, a situation at a, a local business that accepts Bitcoin, you used to actually work at this uh, corner store, yeah, Allie, where apparently one of the employees doesn't really understand Bitcoin, but knows how to use the app. So the em- oh, good. the employer has uh, a Coinbase app on their website, and when you go and you buy something with Bitcoin at the store, the employee is supposed to put in the amount and then generate the code, and you scan the code with your phone, and you pay with the Bitcoin. It usually works fine. Now, it's, it is different than what most... What's the normal kind of exchange that happens, like through a register or something? With yeah, very different Federal Reserve notes. So, I think that that's one of the hurdles to Bitcoin is like you know, for one thing, it does kind of add to the costs of your employees because it's a little extra training, some training. you have to offer. Yeah, there's definitely some training that has to go on here, and in this case, the training was rudimentary to the point where the employee knows how to use knows how to take Bitcoin doesn't really know enough about how it works to be good with customers about it. So somebody, uh, one of the local liberty activists went in, they were going to purchase something for two bucks, two bucks worth of Bitcoin. And apparently the man behind the register put in the wrong amount mm. in the, the little form that generates the QR code that you scan to do the transaction. How much did he put in? I don't know what the amount was that he put in, but it was incorrect. And uh, and so the person who was was buying the customer, who was buying the stuff, he didn't notice. And that's something that ideally you want to look Confirm, at yeah. when you're buying something with Bitcoin. Because it's final. When you send a Bitcoin to somebody, there's not like a refund button that you yeah, can Yeah, but they hit. could send you Bitcoins back. They could, but this... This person does not have access to send bitcoins oh, right, back. The empl- right. You don't want to let your employees of the store have access to your bitcoin wallet. You just want to make Makes it sense. so the employees can can uh, you know take bitcoins in. So what happened was the individual who was the customer pointed out, oh crap, that was a mistake because he actually sent because he sent the wrong amount 
to the to the QR code or whatever, or something happened where it just, you know it didn't register or something like that, and he pointed out, oh wait, I sent the wrong amount, and the guy was like, well, it looks like it came in, I've got it, you know, it's confirmed, but he pointed out on uh, blockchain.info because you can look up any Bitcoin transaction there. He says, look, it's it's confirmed, but it's not the right amount, you know, it was, it was a mistake, and. The dude didn't know what to do about that. It's like, well, I guess we'll just do it again. And so, essentially, the customer ended up paying twice oh, no. for the product. So, there is a learning curve involved. It's a new territory. And if your employees don't fully understand how Bitcoin works, for the most part, it works out. But when something goes wrong, yeah, it can be a problem. That's a pain. So, yeah, there's some learning involved here. In fact, in speaking of the Bitcoin world, uh, Mark has been, he's sick tonight. He's at home. He's been tweeting and he's uh, tweeting and, and uh, Facebooking and Google Plusing, hooting, I guess, as we might call it, all together. He's been putting out some good stuff on there. In fact, he hooted out that uh, Walmart is now available through gift.com, G Y F T, gift.com. I really would love to get Gift on as, as a sponsor of Free Talk Live. So they're getting this one for free, but this is just such great news. People need to know about it. Uh, gift.com is a great site where you can actually go and buy gift cards for a variety of different things restaurants. Amazon. Amazon's the one that I've used with Gift previously. In fact, I bought a new video camera using an Amazon gift card that I purchased through Gift.com. So essentially, that means that I don't have to turn my Bitcoins into cash right. to buy. Because Amazon doesn't accept Bitcoins yet, but they do accept their own gift card. And Gift has a system uh-huh. that allows Gift to buy Bit cards. So or Gift ex- accepts Bitcoins Bitcoin. and they sell gift cards so you can That's buy. Right gift cards with bitcoin and then use gift cards at anywhere right right and you're not ha- you don't have to get a physical card when you go and you buy the card on gift they give you a code and ah. so you have a code that you then go to amazon and you put into amazon and it kind of credits your account basically that the amount of money that was in there gyft so, gyft plus cool. there's like a three percent money back thing so where if you buy with bitcoin they give you bonus points and then as those points uh, accumulate, you can turn those in and get another gift card for the bonus. Man, points. they really should advertise on Free Talk Live. They really should because I understand their product and it works very, very well. I'm I'm kind of a fan of what they do there. Now that you can do Walmart gift cards, I think that's a game changer. Yep. Because you can go and buy your toothbrush and toothpaste and toilet paper and Does this groceries. mean you can buy gas with Bitcoins now? There are some Walmarts that have gas pumps. I don't know about that, Allie. I would presume that anything you can buy with a Walmart gift card at a Walmart, you can now buy with Bitcoin. Through that's gift. great. I mean, that's people who want to know whether Bitcoin's this real thing or not. Here you go. Now you want to go get your tires changed. You can do that with Bitcoin if you got the Walmart Super Center near you. You know, I've complained about gift cards before because it's kind of like like giving a company like Walmart a loan. Like it's their IOU. Yeah. But I guess in this sense, it totally makes sense. In this sense, it makes sense because you're using it it's presumably right away. Right. Uh, I'm not going to buy a gift card and not use it. I'm going to buy one and with, with Bitcoins, and I'm going to immediately go shopping with it. If I leave a small balance left over, that's no big deal. I know at some point I'm going to spend 20 bucks at Amazon, so it's no right. big deal if that sits in the account. Uh, but usually stores win on gift cards because they know, and it was the same thing with gift certificates, they know that people aren't going to cash them in, that there's a certain portion of people who aren't going to cash them in. That's why there's no fee, typically, on right. a lot of gift cards. Although some there are. That's how some they make their money on it. Some of them, they'll hit you with fees, too. It's like you have this val- this balance, and it's good for 180 days, but after that, they start dinging the account for like an administrative fee. Mm-hmm. So some of them even have fees, but the ones that don't have fees, they're just banking on the idea that of 100 people who buy Bit, uh, I keep calling them Bit cards. Of 100 people who buy uh, gift cards, that's what they should be called. 10 of them are probably not going to use them. They're going to get the gift card at Christmas or their birthday, and they're going to think, oh, that's nice. And they're going to put it in a drawer somewhere or put it in their wallet and promptly forget about it and never actually use the balance on the card. So, so not only do they get money. Because when somebody buys a gift card, the store's still getting money when they use the card because they're buying things right. at the store. So they don't lose they don't lose out on the people that use the cards, but they definitely gain on the people who don't who use the cards. Them, yeah. So uh, eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. We didn't finish the My Little Pony story. That's right. So we've got to get back into that. Of course, you can bring up anything you want here on Free Talk Live. 
If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts... Click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. It's the Onion Radio News. A new crispy snack cracker will ease the crushing pain of modern life. The dull, all-consuming ache of present-day existence will be slightly alleviated when Nabisco's breakthrough T.C. McCrispy's line of crackers arrives today. Available in regular Garden Ranch and Zesty Cheddar, the new crackers will flood consumers' bodies with fat, salt, and starch to produce a pleasing sensation of warmth and nourishment, momentarily freeing them from a relentless, crushing sense of profound grief. Mel Krychek is Nabisco's Director of Corporate Communications. Our tasty new snack cracker will, if only for a few lovely moments, significantly lessen the hideously bleak and empty torment of modern life that festers in every solitary soul. Nabisco expects most despair-riddled consumers to eat an entire box in one sitting. Doyle Redlin for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up whatever you want. Just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Tonight, with you in studio, it's Ian. And Allie. And if you are into coffee... And I know Allie is a coffee drinker. I certainly am. You can get a free pound of the best of the best coffee. It's BuzzBox, shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. In fact, it also has Allie's seal of approval, as I understand it. It does. It's very tasty. That's my favorite thing about coffee is how it tastes and how it makes me feel. And they uh, 
and a free pound. You can't beat that of tasty, delicious coffee from BuzzBox. You can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get your free pound right now. Uh, you do pay the shipping cost, but the coffee itself, you won't pay for that. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Their BuzzBox is different than other high-end coffee providers. They're competitively priced with those other people out there, but they're doing something unique. They are actually uh, working a program. They've got a program that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op. They're also looking to recruit a 1,000 Free Talk Live listeners to order coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com, and that'll allow us to finance 100 microloans through World Vision. So they're really doing things to help people in some tough parts of the world make a better life for themselves. You can help do that by drinking coffee, drinking great coffee. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com, and you can get started there. Cancel your subscription at any time and get that free pound of coffee just by paying the cost of shipping at coffee.freetalklive.com. So in the last hour, we talked about the My Little Pony story. A young boy, nine years old, he was in trouble for wearing His... a My Little Pony backpack yep. and having a My Little Pony lunchbox. He was being bullied by other kids at school, um, name-calling, physical assault, and he told his mother about it, and his mother's response, as you know, any caring parent would say, is, "Well, you know, hopefully the people who are in charge there, who are supposed to be, you know, keeping the peace, I would think that that's one of your jobs as a teacher or administrator is to keep kids from tearing each other apart. Uh, that they would be good people to go to to let know about the situation. Mm -hmm. And instead of offering to protect their son, or um, you know, basically." reprimand the kids that have been doing the bullying they end up blaming the little kid for having a backpack that was inviting the bullying blame the victim yes they told him not to bring my little pony accessories so his backpack his lunch pail there he was not supposed to bring those things to school right so but, but so this story got tons of media attention we, you've um, when I was looking for pictures of the backpack I saw that it was on the news and I don't happen to watch the news so I didn't realize like how much attention the story got and i guess most people were sympathetic with the boy or at Thank least goodness. all the attention um you know at least was negative uh as far as how it made the school look so uh there's been a reversal on the school's part hmm. uh, the boy's mother noreen bruce met with school district officials on thursday to hash out their disagreements reports the asheville citizens times the dismayed mother had pulled her fifth grade son, Grayson, out of school last week after school officials allegedly asserted that the My Little Pony bag and various other My Little Pony trappings had become a trigger for bullying and were too distracting to the other students. So you had said, Ian, she should just pull her kid out of school, yeah. and that's what she did. According and she shouldn't put him back, even if they're going to reverse their yeah. position. Well, just, you know, they kind of failed the test of what, how would you handle the situation. So I think I would be... It would be hard for me to want to let my son go back to the school where they're just all, they're only responding to the media attention. Right. It's not because they've actually had a change of heart. <laughs> According to the uh, the elder Bruce and her son, other kids had been picking on the boy with flurries of insults and physical assaults um, because of his backpack, and that the um, Hasbro generated franchise is based uh, mostly geared towards girls. The meeting between Bruce and school officials was a real heart-to-heart, -heart, according to the mother. She says, we are considering all options for getting Grayson back to, in school, she told Citizen Times after the meeting concluded. All of the options include Grayson taking his My Little Pony, My Little Pony backpack to school. Uh, plans will also likely include a parent advisory council on bullying, which Bruce will assist in organizing. What do you think of these kinds of things, like these PTA, <laughs> like like MAD uh, or Mothers Against Drunk Driving and all these organizations that are trying to fix children in their broken homes? Well, I think it's, uh, it's certainly the school attempting to make it look like they're doing something about this. Yeah, oh, is it just we'll a put you on a council. Does it just make the school look good when there's really nothing coming from it other than just a waste of the parents' time. Well, they, they stepped in it big time with their decision on this, and now they're backtracking to try to make it look like they actually care. Yeah, I feel like if something. I was a parent, and it would be like one of those weird social obligations like going to church. Like, are you going to the anti-bullying mm -hmm. meetup lunch dinner thing? And that it's not the kind of thing where anything actually meaningful happens. 
What can they do? I mean, besides getting together and talking about the problem and what they think the punishment should be or maybe trying to mold school policy or district policy or school district policy, ultimately, the problem is that the bullies are there. Right. That the bullies are there amongst people that will be bullied, that uh, are subject to being bullied, are likely to be targets of bullying, and the school won't do anything about that. I mean, imagine that... They have to have them. I feel like a lot of the advice that I hear parents giving to their kids about how to handle bullies is it's assumed that the bullies are going to be there always and you can't get away from them. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if the advice would be different if it wasn't for public schools where everyone's forced into these classrooms or just into the same place. If kids were just allowed to freely roam or they could choose to not associate with certain groups, wouldn't the parents, wouldn't better advice be just to remove yourself from those situations? Well, right. If you're dealing with a privately run school and there's a bully on campus and enough parents come to that school and say, hey, look, uh, we're pulling our kids out unless you do something about this and do something that satisfies us about this. Right. Then the school would have to either whip the kid into shape in some way or get rid of them. Because if you got five, you know, if you got three, two or three people who are paying just as much as that bully's parents are paying for the bully to go to school, there's going to be a real economic incentive there where the school will say, okay, we'll just kick this kid out because we'd rather have five students than this one. So even if it's just a pure economic thing, they would make the right choice in that case. But in the government school system, the best you can hope for is to get the bully sent to the school for bullies, which sometimes they have those where like the troubled kids right. go. And then, of course, you just got a bunch of bullies around other bullies, and that's not necessarily Learning how, a, It's like going to jail where you learn like new yeah, tricks of how, gladiator to, school. how to steal cars oh. or something. So that's not an ideal solution. But anything that I think gets the bully away from the the bullied people is a good thing. Oh, yeah. I would still support like if it I would still support something like that if a private school decided that they were going to have a separate classroom just for the bullies. I mean, if it means less victims, then I would be all for it. Let's I, go to the phones. Liberty Phoenix is on the line in Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live. Liberty Phoenix. Hey, guys, I think you're uh, spot on with uh, your ideas of how much influence that these uh, parents teacher meetings are actually going to have because I mean once those kids that are bullying this poor kid go back to their house they're going to be sitting there watching Disney Channel and playing their Call of Duty and being immersed in the same you know things that are giving them the thoughts that bullying bullying is okay in the first place and the parents can talk to these kids until they're blue in the face and they actually change the way that they interact with their kids and on a constant basis tell them you know that this stuff is not okay i mean to see the stuff that you see on tv is it's i mean in my personal opinion i think the majority of television programming is disgusting i can't even stand tv anymore i've always and wondered if it are, if, if the parents like when i was in school and there were certain kids who were just jerks mm -hmm. i would always wonder if their parents knew that their kid was a jerk. Yeah, or, or are they somehow encouraging that behavior? Right. I, what I what happens assume... to the dad? I mean, okay, so what about the, the kid who's a bully? What kind of a dad does he grow up to be? Mm -hmm. Probably not a very or good one. Or what kind of dad does he have? I mean, I at the time, I didn't realize this. I think I always just thought that the mean kids were just mean because they were born that way. But I think now I would be more inclined to think that it's, kids it's that pick on life. other kids are probably being picked on by their parents or a lot of times by teachers. I witnessed teachers bullying the kids. I've heard, uh, I don't know if you know, but in Phoenix, if you've got more thoughts, hang on. We can bring it back here in a moment. Uh, there was the case of the Robin Hooders being attacked up here by a local thug. I heard a story about him being raised and beaten by his father, so mm, not a surprise. surprise we're coming up. You take control here in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up next. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. 
they get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. You gotta see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and the truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. I'm a very bad man, and today I watched you leave for work. Then I kicked your door and took your stuff. Without a door devil reinforcing your door frame, it was like you invited me. Don't worry, I'll check back in a couple weeks. Once you've got new stuff. <laughs> door devils are available at participating Ace Hardware stores and locksmiths. Or visit doordevil.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on Earth? Most coffee at grocery stores and chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here on these airwaves. You may take control and bring up whatever you like at 855 450 free. That is the Pro XPN toll free line. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We've been talking about secession, My Little Pony backpacks, <laughs> bullying, uh, and that's kind of where we are right now. The story was originally out of North Carolina, where a nine year old boy was in trouble. He was the one who was taking the blame because he was being bullied. School officials said, it's because you are wearing a My Little Pony backpack. You need to stop that. His mom did the right thing, pulled him out of school, which is what everybody who I think uh, really is concerned about their children and their educational qualities should do and you know, concerned about dealing with bullies and things like that. Just get them out of the place where they encounter all this awfulness. Well, the problem is I think a lot of parents don't have the resources available i mean you could make the argument well you shouldn't have had kids if you can't afford to educate them but i think a lot of parents maybe don't realize how bad the schools are until they send their kids there that's probably true or until something goes wrong after they send their uh, their kids there and private school is expensive and a lot of parents can afford to stay home all day 
True. Um, I think there are still solutions for those who really want it, though. Like you can get parenting groups and homeschool groups right. together. Where I'm surprised maybe... there's not more neighborhood schools or just no one knows their neighbors anymore. Yeah. So that's another issue. But um, I think that you would see if people really wanted that, they'd come up with solutions. They would come up with ways to like homeschool groups. So, for instance, you if you could find 20 or 30 homeschool kids in the area and have them all go to the same place during the daytime and pay that one parent who's there to sort of mentor or be there to as a resource or whatever. They don't have to be an expert, but it could be more of like an unschooling group or something like that where the children direct their own learning and they just have some sort of adult supervision during that process. That wouldn't be a very expensive thing. I mean, if right. you had 20 kids together, 20 sets of parents, they could all pay, you know, X amount of dollars per month and then all that money would go to the person who's the facilitator. That would be a way for one parent to actually make a living make off a of living, doing exactly. that. Make a living, exactly. And keep the cost down dramatically because it could be done in someone's home or in a church or something like that. There are options, I think, for those who really think creatively I think you're about right. it. But I, I understand that people will at first um, – brush up against it because, well, it's insulting considering they're paying thousands of dollars to the government state schools and they'll still be forced to pay that money unless, of course, we find some parents who have the courage to not pay property taxes as well, in which case that would be an amazing thing if parents would actually come together and have a property tax revolt and say, you know what, we're going to pull our kids out of school and pull our money out of the government school system as well and put that money into a, our own private school, our own homeschooling group, or our own unschooling group. And then what are the, how many people are the government going to kick out of their homes in order to make a point? I know. That looked pretty bad. You families. Know, yeah. How many families are they going to kick out of Taking kids homes? out of their church school. Point. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, a little bit of activism, I think, could go a long way on this issue. And I think maybe the Free State Project is where stuff like that should be tried. Go to freestateproject.org to learn more about it. So this mother ended up um, having a meeting with the school officials, and they said, okay, okay, so he can bring the backpack to school. We support that decision. And so she made a statement basically saying that they had a heart-to-heart. And the school also released a statement. They said, we have appreciated the opportunity to meet with the Bruce family and discuss the issues. Um, We sincerely regret that the issue of being told to leave the book bag at home was perceived as blaming Grayson. That's a son. How else would you perceive name. it? <laughs> well, that was not the intent. The perception became reality. So they admit that. What was the intent? I don't know. I think that they, in their mind, probably think that they are protecting him. They probably thought your mom isn't because, you know, have you ever heard parents? Um, I've heard some parents talking about how they want to let their kids decide for themselves, you know, what they're going to wear or what they're going to do mm-hmm. as far as like how they're going to present themselves to the world. And I think that that's a cool idea. And then I hear some parents saying, well, but then I also don't want my son or daughter to get picked on because they choose something that's not, that doesn't conform enough. Thing so is, they going to get picked on anyway. It's true. So, I mean, I didn't, I don't recall wearing anything that was out of the ordinary at school, but I certainly had been picked on. And uh, and then when I got older, I did some picking on. So it was that kind of cycle of mm. abuse thing going on. Yeah, even if everybody's wearing the same thing, and there are schools that do this, right? They'll have the school uniform yes. policy with the idea being that people will, well, if everyone's wearing the same thing, then they can't uh, pick on each other for not you know, not wearing Tommy Hilfiger or Aeropostale or whatever the cool, I guess Tommy Hilfiger's probably out these days, but whatever it is that's in uh, as far as the, the styles. But they could always pick on you for, for wearing glasses or having a, a front tooth missing or, right. you know, whatever. Like you were saying, Ian, I mean, I think that people just, there's conformity that just kind of happens naturally where people say, I want to fit in with this group of people. And that takes looking like and talking like and imitating Mm -hmm. this group of people. And there are always going to be the people that rebel and try to go against the grain um, or they wear something that's going to be controversial. Right. Even within the uniform policy, you'll still see people styling their hair differently or doing whatever kind of personal accessorizing they can do. You can't deny people their individuality. individuality, They're going to find it. it, Yeah, Yeah. it it peeks through. Liberty Phoenix, you're back with us in Illinois. I think you had some more thoughts you wanted to share. So go ahead. Yeah, I just I don't think that the concept of bullying is going to be stopped by taking your kids out of out of a public school and putting them in a private school. Um, I love the idea of homeschooling and unschooling, but if we're going to have our kids in a in a in a school with other kids, 
the bullying is never going to stop until these children are rem- are removed. That's from what I'm saying, though. If they were at a private in a, in a school, the private school would be more likely to stop it, don't you think? Well, but I think it's a, it's a moot point because until the parents stop raising their children, utilizing violent tactics, you know. Um, it's not going to change because these kids are being raised to think that that's normal. I agree. There okay. are still going to be bullies at a private school, but don't you also agree that as far as incentives are concerned, the private school has a greater incentive to make sure that people are safe and happy there than does a government See, school? See, I'm worried when you say that, though, that it's going to give people the impression that when they hear about some kid having a terrible experience at a private school or people that have been to private schools and said, that wasn't my experience, got bullied more than I did at public school, mm-hmm. that they're going to think, well, yeah. I guess the the market's not good at deciding these things. But private schools have a lot of restrictions put on them, I understand, from like the Department of Education or whatever. Yeah, the but that state. doesn't mean they can't turn down a customer. There I don't are know. Restrictions on, they, there well, are restrictions the private, on curriculum, but go ahead, Liberty Phoenix. I think the private school... I think the private school would have an incentive to allow the children of the richer parents to pretty much get away with murder. I mean, if I think that's certainly true. You could you could definitely make an argument I mean, for that, especially if it's the son of the dean or something like that who's doing the bullying. I mean, there's there could be private schools who make irrational choices in that if you know if one kid has rich parents for whatever reason that uh, overrides the desires of a majority of parents or even a small minority of parents. To me, if I were running a school and I had somebody that was causing trouble, I'd want to deal with that trouble because I wouldn't want to lose students. Yeah, there could be exceptions to that rule, but it seems seems like pretty cut and dry uh, economics to me. If, if, if enough parents are frustrated with a situation and they, they threaten to leave, they should leave if they don't get what they want, and then they can go and start their own school. I think what it comes down to is the environment. Uh, the solution to bullying does not require the environment for the school to change. It requires the environment of the home to change. Sure. And until there's parents, start you've got to stop it at the more. source. I agree. But you, how are you going to do that with but another family? But the school can do something about it. They can well, either do the something or not. Really do it. Right. The only way to do it is to spread the word and, and, and let people know that there's these other ways of raising your children that are more effective, and it produces a better quality individual when they get older. I mean, yeah, it's going to take – you're going to have to try harder. Parents these days are so lazy and okay with just allowing the government to take care of their kids. That it, I agree. I would want the parents to try harder, but at the same time, if I were administrating a school – I would also, you know, I wouldn't want to kick the bully out right at the first complaint. I think they, they should be on some sort of probationary period where, look, kid, you do this again or two more times, third strike and you're out kind of thing. If you keep doing this, you're going to be out of here. And so I think there are things the school can do to deal with the symptoms of the issue that you're talking about, which is bad parenting and a bad home life. And maybe the school can offer, you know, home school classes or something like that or uh, or classes for the parents on, look, here's how to be a better parent. You either take these classes or you're going to lose your kids not going to be at this school anymore. I agree that the school can take steps after the fact to mitigate the amount of bullying and psychological trauma that the children su- suffer from being in those schoolhouses. But ultimately, it's never really going to change until the, until the household gets upgraded. So, Right. I totally I agree with you, but that's not likely. I mean, it, the idea that every household in America is going to become this wonderful place that'll be ideal for children is not a realistic belief. I mean, there are always going to be people who will beat their kids and will treat their kids like dirt, and those kids are going to come to where other kids are, and they're going to act those things out. And thank you for the call, Liberty Phoenix. Well, I wish we could live in a society that that respects the boundaries of space One amongst day. their children. Hopefully. Maybe if it was an intentional society. It's trending that way, luckily. If people came to that to a single place with that viewpoint, you know, peaceful parents or whatever, that would be cool. See you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com, constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. 
freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, freedomsphoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to freedomsphoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenix.com. Freedomsphoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand. And this is Jessica Armand. Here with your Liberty Beat for March 20th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,326, silver at $20.29, and Bitcoin is trading at $592. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem, operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush, online at SovereignBTC.com. And from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. For your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy at 512-343-6494, or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS 216624. And from the Soleil School, enrolling children from 5 through 10 in Austin, visit soleilschool.com. And now the news. Security fixes that address the problems Mt. Gox blamed for the loss of bitcoins were put into place Wednesday. PC World reports that the software, known as Bitcoin QT, has been renamed as Bitcoin Core. The rebranding is intended to show that it runs the core infrastructure of the cryptocurrency's transaction and verification network. According to the release notes, the latest version of Bitcoin software contains more than a half dozen fixes for transaction malleability. A surprise appearance Tuesday at the 2014 TED conference in Vancouver, Canada. Brian Hagen has this story. NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, by use of a remote-controlled satellite robot, appeared on stage to address the conference goers, outlining why he 